you go. Welcome to the Deliverance Center and the end of the world. It's the end of the year. So I figured, hey, why not do the end of something? So I decided to end the whole thing. The whole why not take the whole world and Amen. see what you gotta do is think outside the box. Well, this box here. <laughs> Sometimes it's empty. All right. I did a uh, study tonight on the end of the world, tribulation, all that stuff, and only used one verse from Revelation. Yeah. I'm the only one that finds that amusing. Okay, the next seminar is at the end of January. Uh, those are my new radio times. Uh, I got new, uh, I juggled my schedule up on 10, 10 a.m., on every day of the week. I'm also on uh, streamers. I'm also on the radio on uh, Omni FM. You can get the shows 24-7 off there, archive shows. You can get it on the internet on the Secular Dark Sky Radio. I'm on Sunday nights at 9 p.m. And if you want to help us this year, 2019, like you did in 2018, we had a record year in donations. 2018 and paid all the bills with a slam dunk. Then we've reloaded the building fund. Uh, about 50% of it's already been uh, replaced from when we bought this place from the Mormons. So YouTubers and friends, hey, thank you for what you've done for us. All the bills have been paid for the Healing House. We've had so many people stay there and uh, they didn't have any money and couldn't survive and they came here for help and they got to stay there for free. Thanks to you for donating the food for them. So it's been fantastic. God's met every single need. My uh, sister last year, uh, her, her husband came to her and said, hey, I'm out of here. And uh, they'd been married for, ooh, like 20-something years, 20 years, something like that. So my sister, she's 60 years old. She has no transferable job skills. Uh, she's got kind of anxiety disorder issues. She's got a bad back. Uh, now her husband's leaving her. And, uh, you know, we had a long discussion about it. The bottom line was... Uh, these administrative things that you face in life, that's a Holy Ghost specialty. And now that I think about it, everything he does is a specialty. I said, he's got you covered on this thing. You don't even worry about it. And I knew she wasn't going to listen. Because when you got an anxiety disorder, you tell them don't worry, and then they just keep worrying. I said, don't it? He? He's got this thing in the bag. And it was, we got another miracle today. You can ask my wife. One victory after the other. She got everything. Like knocking off dominoes, she got all of it. The house, the alimony, the... A job fell out of the air and fell in her lap, wow, thank you. and everything went her way. It was ridiculous. So many things were going good for her. I turned into a church person. I was jealous. If you want to help us this year, like you did last year, when you buy something on Amazon, just put in our charity name, and they'll donate money to us when you buy stuff on Amazon.com, which everybody does. Same thing with Good Search. Switch over from Google. They will pay us. The video uh, tonight is on our channel number one, House of Healing AZ, YouTube. There's your miracle list, YouTubers. Please get that from me some way so you can... Uh, Start up uh, deliverances at home, self-deliverance, the whole deal. The donation boxes obviously are on the doors. Thank you for your donations. You can donate on the website. 
we get all kinds of donations off the website. Thank you, YouTubers. God bless you for that. We is grateful. There's the books that Karina was talking about that I wrote. Healing from Mental Illness, healing, General Healing, and Exposing the Devil. All right. The end of the world. Everybody uses a Daniel, Ezekiel, Revelation, everybody. But I decided to go a different direction that I thought would be interesting. And uh, we'll see if it was interesting to anybody else here in just a few minutes. I took these three chapters, Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13, and put it all together. And it came out just fine for me. All right, let's take a first shot at it. Uh, as Jesus sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when shall all these things be? Everybody's read this, right? Okay. What shall be the sign of your coming? And the Greek word for the second coming is parousia. It means the unveiling. And Simeon is a Greek word for miracles. So they said, hey, what kind of miracles are going to occur at the time you come back? That's what they were asking him. And at the end of the Ion age, right? So those were the questions that he asked. They asked him. And he goes about answering those questions. The parousia, the second advent of Christ. All religions have <coughs> this. Hinduism has the end of the world scenario. Islam has the end of the world scenario. They also have a antichrist type figure that's going to take over the planet. So do the Hindus. All, almost all religions have the end of the world because that's part of, of human nature. We, are, we all have a little bit of end of the world in us. And everybody is predisposed genetically to want to know what the end is. Everybody does. And that's why all religions have it. Eh? So an atheist would say, oh, this is bunk, and all their opinions are bunk. We would say this is true, and all their opinions are bunk. So everybody is bunking each other. That isn't good, particularly if you're married. But we're born-again Christians, so we believe the Bible and know it to be the Word of God, right? Everybody has a parousia. Ours is the only real one. However, the end of the world has been predicted before by dozens of people in different religions. For example, it's kind of started in 1910. Halley's Comet was preached to be the end of the world and the second coming of Christ. Well, that didn't happen, so Pat Robertson came up with one in 1982 when he predicted Armageddon. Do you remember the hale bopp Comet? Probably not. If you're a little older person to get that one. That was a suicide cult in 1987. They predicted the end of the world. Uh, another one named Michael Traveser in New Mexico, predicted the end of the world. They all went up to a mountain waiting for the end. Never happened. He later got convicted of child molestation. I think that was wishful thinking on his part. He went up to, to the mountain there and goes, you know what, I, this has got to be the end of the world. The end of his world came a little later than that after the trial. Jesus Luis de Miranda, you remember him? He was a guy who showed up in Florida from Puerto Rico. He, he said initially that he was Jesus, and then changed his mind and said he was the Antichrist. Then changed his mind, he had cancer, and, and he died. Uh, the El Shaddai cult, which I believe is still around in Minnesota, I think they're still active. They predicted the end of the world in 08. Never happened. Jerry Falwell was a a uh, prominent TV preacher. He's a Baptist. So you know he didn't have it right. So he predicted the rapture in 2009. Uh, 
He missed it because he died in 07. Harold Camping is the most famous one of all. This guy was a really interesting person. He had a radio cult, had been on the radio for over 40 years. He owned his own radio station, uh, all paid for and everything. He taught numerous false doctrines over the years. He had the rapture coming in 1994, and then it switched over to 2011, and then so on. <clears throat> he, got, he got so bad that after he died, that uh, they took him off the radio program. He's not even on the, on the ministry with family radio anymore, because he had taught so many false doctrines. And this one was really bad because he had thousands of people in the United States this was all over the national news. They had left their jobs, bought RVs, left their homes. Everybody, they were absolutely positive that it was all over. And it was really sad. A lot of people lost their life savings and everything else. They were selling all their stuff off because, <clears throat> you know, why, what do you need it for? It's the end of the world. They got rid of all their stuff. They left their homes. It was, it was heartbreaking. He had big... Uh, Billboards all over the United States. There was a big one up on Cave Creek Road saying, repent, the end is coming. And it had the date when the end of the world was really sad. Jack Van Impey uh, took a shot at it, 2012, second advent, 2019. This guy came out with the Bible Code. You ever heard that book? It was really popular a few years ago. Uh, they... Basically, we're going off the Mayan calendar, and the end of the world was uh, December of 2012. John Hagee and Mark Blitz come up with the four blood moons. You ever heard, heard of blood moons? Well, those, are, those are a pip. The end was supposed to be 2015. Oops. Uh, the Catholics have predicted it. Uh, Joseph Smith, the Mormon, he, he predicted it in 1891. Gardner Ted Armstrong and his dad, they had three different dates for the end of the world. Jehovah Witnesses had four of them. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton predicted the end of the world in 2000. Edgar Cayce, the uh, spiritualist, also predicted it in 2000. A physicist named Frank Tipler has predicted it in 2057. We've got a few years left. Jean Dixon, you ever heard of her? She was a psychic back in the 70s. She said it was going to be 2020. So you've got about a year left, maybe. A little over a year, and you're done. Uh, a guru from Hinduism, she's got it at 2025. So you pick your date, and you're in. Everybody wants to predict the end of the world, and I got jealous when I read all of that, and I said, hey, what about me? <laughs> Why did they get, I don't get it. It made me mad, because you get in on the end of the world gig, and I had left behind. So I'm going to get one tonight. All right, two major uh, prophetic events happened in the world. What were they? Number one was uh, post-Christ, I mean, this one. That's number one. Number two was 1948 when Israel became a nation. Those two events were uh, re repetitively predicted prophetically and actually happened exactly the way was predicted. Now here's, here's what it says, Luke 21. Before all these things happen, what's he doing in Luke 21? He goes through the end of the world, okay? He explains all of it, tribulation, judgment, second coming. Then he says, before all these things happen, uh, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you and deliver you up to the synagogues and the prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And then it says, it will turn to you for a testimony. 
Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate on what you shall answer. I will give you a mouth and wisdom your adversaries cannot and tapo, refute. In other words, uh, they got some supernatural ability to debate. And they were out boxing the Jews and the Pharisees. Then it says, you shall be betrayed by your parents and your brothers. Your kinsfolk, that's relatives, friends, some of you will be put to death. You'll be hated for all for my name's sake. But, he says, not a hair of your heads will perish, for in your patience possess you your soul. As far as we know, when Jerusalem was destroyed, no born-again Christians were there and died with them. They escaped. Why? Because they already had the prophecy. The Jews did not. They did not believe it. What's going to happen to all human beings who don't believe him? They're all going to perish. If you do believe, you escape. You get out of it. That's what happened. They escaped the destruction of Jerusalem. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, you know that the desolation is near. Then, let everybody in Judea flee to the mountains. If you're in the middle of Jerusalem, leave. If you're outside of Jerusalem, don't come in. Good advice. These are the what? Days of vengeance. It's also called the times of the Gentiles from the destruction of the Jews until the second coming is the time of the Gentiles. It's the days of vengeance. When Jesus was being crucified, the Jews were yelling at Pilate. They said, let his blood be on us and our children forever. They curse themselves. So the times of the Gentiles started, boom, when Jerusalem was wiped out. And it ends at the second coming. However, Jesus had already predicted this event earlier. Remember? Let's go back to Luke 19. It says, he came near and he beheld the city and he wept over it. That's the Greek word, klio, which means to wail. He had a crying fit watching Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives. You look over and you can see it like it's from the top of it. And he is not weeping, but wailing over them because he knew what was coming. The Romans were going to murder everybody. In cold blood, they were the Nazis of the first century. And Jesus knew what was going to happen to them. Why? Because they did not recognize their day. They didn't see it. But now it is hid from your eyes. It says here, the days shall come. Your enemies will cast a trench around you and surround you on every side. And they will lay you even to the ground and your children. And they will not leave you one stone upon another. And if you ever read the material from Josephus, he's got a fantastic section in the book the Jewish wars. The Romans invaded Jerusalem in 69, 67 AD. And it took them three years to destroy everybody. And they would take the pregnant women with the 
knives, slash, them, slash open their stomachs, pull the kids out. They would take toddlers, throw the two-year-olds in the air, and then move the spear over and catch them. And everybody was murdered in cold blood. They taught the Nazis how to do it. Hitler, at least, did it a little bit more humane. You went in there, you got a fake shower, the gas hit you, then they cremated your body. Not Romans, uh-uh. No, you're going to die and die ugly. And they died ugly. They destroyed everything. Why? Because you did not know it was the time of your visitation. Fast forward a couple thousand years and come to Phoenix, Arizona. Wow. 90-something percent of born-again Christians don't recognize their call from God. They don't recognize it. They were too busy running their own life, making their own decisions. Choosing their own mates, choosing this, choosing that, choosing this, doing this, doing that. And never heard the call of God on their soul. Most Christians have blown their call from God. Vast majority, over 90%, easy. Why? They didn't recognize the time of their visitation. Every born-again Christian has a call from God on their lives. Few of them recognize it. The whole nation of Israel didn't recognize the time of their visitation. Sad. Sad. From 4 AD to 33 AD, that was the time of the Jewish visitation because it was the first advent of the Jewish Messiah, Yahshua. They didn't recognize it. They didn't get it. Typical Christian. And Jesus goes on to explain what's going to happen to him. Woe to you who are pregnant. Woe to, woe to you that are nursing children in those days. You will be slaughtered, he goes on to explain. They will fall by the sword. And led away captive to all nations. Slaves. The Romans came in and took all the able-bodied people that weren't butchered. And they sold them off as slaves. The ones that were not useful. <coughs> execution. What did they call that when Obamacare came out? There was a tribunal supposedly set up to figure out whether you deserved any medical care or you were too old or too sick. Remember that? Romans had that long before anybody else had it. Are you healthy? Can you be sold? No. Okay, you're dead. Relatively simple process. You will be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles, the Greek word is ethnos, it means nations, is fulfilled. It's fulfilled when? At the second advent of Christ. That's when it ends. It started at the time of their visitation. They didn't get it. 69 AD. 67 AD. The Romans came in. Took them three years. They held them off for three years before they butchered everybody. Amazing. And here's some uh, old, uh, this one here is a picture of it in stone on one of the buildings showing the invasion. There's what some of the rocks looked like years ago before the Wailing Wall was cleaned up to the best of their ability. They just got into the temple. They cut through the blocks and then they pushed them over. And they just destroyed everything they could get their hands on. They stole all the instruments of Judaism, all the gold and all the product they had in the temple. It was all stolen or destroyed. 
They just wiped them out and wiped out the religion. Judaism was wiped out that day. Why is that, though? Well, they brought it on themselves, but behind the scenes, the Holy Ghost is always working. And even though something appears to be something up front, he's got something cooking in the background that nobody can see, including the devil. He doesn't know what the Holy Ghost is up to. He gets outsmarted all the time. I just told you an incident of it. My sister was in a helpless situation. You know, she had no skills, no money, no nothing. Husband leaving. You know, she doesn't listen to these broadcasts, but she's not. She's a good person, you know, but. No way for her to overcome that kind of a hit. And behind the scenes, the Spirit of the Lord had it all worked out. It doesn't matter how little it is or how big it is. He's got it covered. Because challenges are only for humans. He has no challenges. He never has a tough day. Never gets stumped on something. Never gets intimidated. Has no fear whatsoever. And is always one step ahead of everybody else. Natural world, spiritual world. You name it, he's got it. Here are the two individuals that slaughtered Judaism and Israel at the time. The general that led the charge. 1.1 million Jews died. The Nazis uh, had a much higher total. Almost 100,000 were sold into slavery, according to Josephus. 40,000 of them were unsold and freed, let go. 350,000 of them died of starvation. 960 of them were what? Masada was the last stronghold of the Jews, and the Romans took three years to get through there. And when they broke through, they found them all dead. They had all committed a mass suicide because they didn't want to be tortured or sold as slaves or butchered by the Romans. Hey, it's a cruel world out there. It really is. It's unbelievable what the depravity of human beings is capable of. It's a, quite remarkable. All right. Then Jesus, after going through the first prophecy, switches over to the second coming. He leaves the first prophecy, the wiping out of Jerusalem and, and Judaism as they know it, and then he switches over to the second coming. This part's interesting. The reason that all these other people misdiagnosed it was because they didn't read the text carefully. The second coming is not a secret event. Yeah, that's what Harold Camping said in his news conference after none of it happened. Did anybody happen to see that? It was fascinating. Nobody? All right. I'm the guy with the news for you. I get paid the big bucks for this. He sat there and he said, hey, we made a mistake. It wasn't a physical return of Christ. It was a spiritual return. He did return, but it was spiritual. He actually said that on the news. Everybody's mouth hit the floor, but that was an excuse that Jehovah Witnesses had used years ago, so he, I think he got it from the Jehovah Witnesses. Jehovah Witnesses always want to help you out. What they should have read was the scriptures, because the second coming is not a secret event. It's a Splash, nobody's ever seen before. Like lightning, he uh, likens it to. And it says, Take heed that you do not be deceived. For many will come in my name, claiming to be God. Ego imi was the Greek phrase for the Hebrew phrase, I am that I am. Ego imi was applied to Jesus, and he is the great I am. I am that I am. Jesus was God in the flesh. 
Well, many will come claiming they are God. For example, Jose Luis de Miranda, I just told you, he, he said he was God in Florida. So it's going to happen. Moon said he was God. Reverend Sung Moon, he's dead now. He created the Moonies. There's, that's not a serial. That's a group of people that... <laughs> The time draws near. I just gave you a list, just a partial list. That was there was all kinds of others that did it, saying, "Hey, the end is coming." See, that's part of human nature. People come up with that, and it just comes out of them naturally. Don't go after them. That guy Miranda in Florida had thousands of followers. He had huge services. People showing up. Thousands of people believed he was first Jesus and then believed he was the Antichrist. I'm not making any of this up. When you hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. These things must first come to pass, first come to pass. But the end is not right after that, okay? Then it says, Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. You've read this, haven't you? Everybody's read this. Great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, pestilences, all kinds of crap going on. A phobaton is something you see and you go, ah, it wants to give you a heart attack of fear. Something happens that's so horrible you're physically reacting to it. Is what it means. But what, what he's saying there is it kind of runs like the stock market, doesn't it? All these predictions, we are not in the tribulation now or the second coming, but what he was talking about was an acceleration of these things and a peak happening during the tribulation. That's what he's talking about. All this stuff has already started. It's already happening now. It just runs in an accelerated pattern. It doesn't suddenly start happening. The tribulations already have. And it says, great Simeon miracles will occur from heaven. There shall be, Simeon again, miracles in the sun, the moon, the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations, perplexity, the sea and waves roaring. What is that? Tsunami is correct. It's already happening. All that stuff that he's talking about, this isn't the end yet, he said. But it's like a baby, a, a mother with birth pangs. It's starting and then it accelerates, is what he's basically saying. How are we doing so far? Okay. Men's hearts failing them for fear. What's that? Having a heart attack. Correct. Heart attacks from things they are seeing that are petrifying them. Scared to death. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in power and great glory. Okay? So... It accelerates here and then bang. It worsens and worsens and worsens and worsens. And then the lightning, like the lightning, he returns. That's the pattern he's telling us. When these things begin to come to pass, we're already in it, so it's already kind of starting now. Lift up your heads and look up, for your redemption draws nigh. Here's the second coming. Who in the heck is he talking to? Christians. What does that mean? Christians are in the tribulation. The second coming is at the end of the tribulation. Correct? Enoch also, according to Jude, the seventh from Adam, also made a prophecy, and he said, the Lord comes back 
with 10,000 of the saints. James quoting out of the book of Enoch. Now that's another interesting verse because there are Christians in the tribulation and there are Christians coming back at the second coming. Correct? Am I misreading it? Okay. What about the book of Enoch? I don't go there because I got enough problems. Matthew 24 says, of that day and hour, I wish someone would have gotten a hold of Harold. Of that day and hour, no one knows. Okay, What's he talking about? The second coming. Bang. Here. Nobody knows, only Father. But, he said, in addition to the acceleration of all these disasters, humans will be acting like the days of Noah. What were they doing there? Uh, false worshiping, they did normal human things, they worked, they got married, they got divorced, they went to the bathroom, they had idols, they did spiritual things, they did normal human things is what he's saying. Humanity will keep going on like humans in the midst of all the acceleration of these other natural disasters. Correct? And, that, and that's what happens. We had a tsunami just hit where? Indonesia or Tanzania or something? Okay. We didn't do anything different when that hit. I didn't. I went through my normal routine. What he's saying is everybody is going to be going through their normal routines in the midst of varying hideous disasters that keep getting worse, accelerating and getting worse. More earthquakes, more tsunamis, more fires, more tornadoes, more hurricanes, more whatever. Yeah, I mean, there was a last year was hideous for hurricanes. I, I lived a normal life during the hurricanes. Why is that? We don't we don't get many hurricanes in Phoenix. That's why we live here. Yeah. We don't have any weather at all here. We have a fall and we have the fires of the gates of hell. And that's it. That's all we have. That's why we live here. Okay, that's what he's saying. People are going to be living the normal lives. Oops. Likewise, when you see these things come to pass, people living normal lives and Dying in droves from natural disasters, like we had just this week with that last tsunami. Uh, only a few people died, right? 200-something people. This is all going to accelerate. Thousands dying. Tens of thousands. It's all going to get worse. But the people that are not in that particular disaster are going to be living normal lives. Eating, worshiping, going to work, cleaning the yard. I mean, whatever people do. The end is close. It's not here yet, but it's close. Right? Then it says, still in Luke 21, this generation shall not pass away until all be fulfilled. Now, parakamai means to pass from one condition into another condition. For example, uh, tonight, while I was home, I took a shower. When I take a shower, I don't have any clothes on. Learned it in college. <laughs> then I dried myself off and I put on this luxurious outfit, causing deep envy and greed among the masses. I didn't change. I changed from this condition into that condition, is what the word means, right? I didn't disappear or die or go away. I just changed from one state into another state. This generation will not change from that state into another state or another generation until all this is fulfilled. Correct? Then it says, heaven and earth shall 
go from one condition into another condition. Heaven will do that. Okay, The current heaven where God is now is going to be renovated or changed into a new heaven and a new earth. And the earth in the condition it is now, trashed out, will be eventually renovated into another condition similar to, um, I guess, is something like the Garden of Eden where the whole thing has been restored from humans leasing it and trashing it. Yeah, I used to have a lot of rental properties years ago. Used to drink a lot as well, and uh, the tenants, if you've ever had a tenant, uh, some of them don't treat the place like it's their home. Others of them treat the place like it is their home. And sometimes they leave quickly or suddenly, something comes up, and I, as the landlord and the owner of the property, visit the unit and I my key didn't work, so I got a little locksmith to get into my own building because they had changed the locks. And then you go in there, and guess what's in there? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yeah. You think, you think you're in the tribulation at that moment. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, I owned a rental property down on Grant Street. That's in South Phoenix. Uh... I believe I was on drugs at the time I bought it. But anyway, I bought this triplex down there. I came over there one night. They had not paid their rent. It was a husband and wife and an uncle and a brother and somebody else, a couple of kids. And nobody was there. Nobody was home. I go to the tenant in the other unit. I say, hey, what happened to the, I don't remember the name, the Smiths. Where are they at? There's nobody, nobody in the unit. What's going on? The tenant goes, oh, they were, they were at a bar the other night on Buckeye, and a fight broke out, and these two guys came back later while they were still in the bar and shot the guy. Then they took him outside and threw him in the back of the pickup in front of everybody, and they got scared that uh, they were going to get eliminated as witnesses to a murder, okay? So they left. I said, oh, that's nice. I, shame to admit this, but pilfered through their mail. It's between you and I, and if you repeat it, I'm going to deny it. <laughs> oh, I got their phone bill. Oh, the phone company was treated like Brother Mike, not going to get paid, not going to do it. So I'm looking down the phone bill, and I see these calls to Utah, several of them. Yes, sir. Guess what I did? Yeah. I power Urkelmined them. I went, they went from this condition as my tenants to that condition as what they call a skip. I called the guy. I talked to his sister in Utah. Oh, they were here. They left for California yesterday. They're running. They're on the run. And then she told me the whole story. Well, there was trash all along the front of the house unit, all through the house, to the back bedroom, out the back door, all up the back side of the house, all through that side of the house. There was trash and furniture and clothes everywhere. That's why people normally call me lucky. I had to get my pickup, load the pickup, and make numerous trips to the dump. I know what I'm doing right now. I'm, you have this deep-seated envy. You want to be a landlord. <laughs> I know you do. Whew. I had a nice unit there, all painted, everything set up. They rented it. It went from that condition into running on a witnesses to a murder. Okay? 
my words shall not change the word of God never changes it doesn't pass into another condition it always stays on that point if God says it that's it it's baked into eternity okay warning check this out he issues warnings to Christians who are in the tribulation that's interesting take heed to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be Barnuo burdened down with these things surfeiting what the heck is that? It's an old English term for puking. You ever been so drunk you puke? Don't raise your hand. I never was. No, I never. I go to happy hour years ago, and I would start on the beer, and then as soon as I started to get a little buzz going, I'd switch over to Diet Coke. I know what you're thinking. You're looking at a Rhodes Scholar. <laughs> I get that reaction often. Except one night. I had bet a lot of money on a fight. Uh, the George Foreman and Vander Holyfield fight. It was back in 1991. Ever heard of those names? Anyway, I took Foreman. Somebody just expressed the word I did then. Did you hear that? Ah, uh, come out. Well, during the fight, for some reason, I was so uh, wrapped up in the fight, and, and everybody was there, and everybody partying. I was so wrapped up in the fight, I just kept drinking, and I, and I didn't initiate, or parkamai, I didn't transfer over to my Diet Coke idea. Sometimes you can get so wrapped up in something, you're not thinking straight. And, wow, that was, wow, shouldn't have done that. No, that was a bad move. I got, uh, you know, two-thirds bombed. Well, after the fight, I was none too good a mood. No. Now, people are in a bad mood when they are opening their pants and taking cash out of it and giving it to another person. You ever heard of that? You're giving cash to someone else. That's not a warm, fuzzy feeling. <laughs> Particularly after I saw the fight and it was a close decision and I was that close to winning, uh, you know, several car payments. So I leave with a friend of mine. I said, I'm starving now. I didn't eat anything all night because I'm watching the fight and I had these beers as nourishment. Parakamai, I had transferred from a stone-cold, sober human to someone who wasn't sure what my name was. I get in the car, and my buddy and I were, were laughing about something. And a few minutes later, I had these lights behind me. I thought, well, that's odd. You know, this isn't Christmas. They're, co they're colored lights. It's weird. <laughs> and the rest of the story, I believe you're aware of, you know, I was Kripali, I was not there, but I was, it means people that are taking drugs and drinking, and you drink so much, you're damaging your health, is what that word means. Metho is drunkenness, where we get our English word methamphetamine, correct. And the cares of this life, marimna, means worrying and being anxious over your carnal existence. Jesus specifically said that in the Sermon on the Mount. Remember? The cares of your life. Don't worry about what you eat, what you drink, what you should put on. The Holy Ghost has got that thing covered. That was the verse I used on my sister. Didn't help, but I mean, if you don't have an anxiety disorder and you're listening, those are comforting words. Listen. God's got you covered no matter what 
happens, yeah. period. Yeah. Even if you screw up, yeah. and even if you make a mistake, the Holy Ghost already has a backup plan to bail you out of it. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is repent and submit. The plan kicks in for you. Ask my sister. Yeah. My son-in-law, he's a good guy, I love him. Uh, he's going to be paying you know, a lot of money for several years. He'll probably be sitting in uh, the studio apartment thinking, I should have thought about this divorce thing a little better. Okay, listen. If you have anxiety about your life and the things of your life, what you shall wear, what you pay this bill, what about this, what about the divorce, what about the foreclosure? If you have all these anxieties in your life, the demons are going to slaughter you because anxiety is kryptonite to faith. Anxiety destroys faith. Once faith is destroyed, miracles stop. That's why I was pumping those verses into my sister. This thing's covered. You're going to be taken care of. It's, as they say in Hebrew, no problemo. <laughs> Jesus said, if you do that, it's going to wipe out your anointing. It's going to wipe out your, your discernment. Remember that person you married? Uh-huh. It wipes out your discernment, and you won't know when that day comes upon you. The second coming. These are Christians that are in the tribulation. How they got there, we'll go over in a minute. As a snare, it shall come upon the whole planet. So this is a big event. Then he comes up with some warnings before the tribulation. Before the tribulation. Right? The rapture. Check this out. Now, I got to issue a caveat here. Uh, nobody really knows how this is going to work. And I don't really know it either. I have my own personal beliefs. And I think my beliefs are right. But would I gamble the souls of my grandkids on what I think is right? I don't. I wouldn't do it. So I'm saying that. If you disagree with my conclusions, that is fine with me. I don't have any problem with that. Okay? There's no need to send me an email <laughs> saying I'm an apostate. Okay? I'm not. I'm just sharing what I think is going to happen. Check it out. In the book of Revelation, this is the only time we're going to use it. In the first three chapters, what's going on there? Well, Jesus is evaluating the churches, and they sound exactly like the churches now. It is phenomenal. He's got a mega church in there. He's got a benign churches. He's got lukewarm. He's got everything, just like we do. And then it says in chapter 4, check this out. After this, after the churches, I looked up. I saw a door open in heaven. And then I heard a trumpet. Come up here and I will show you everything that's going to have to happen after the churches. This, in my opinion, is the red flag. The rapture happens here. So that from chapter 4 on, all that is futuristic. What's going to happen in the future? The first three chapters were what happened in the past. So 
So the rapture occurs between three and four click The rapture occurs here that means everything else is in the past After the rapture everything's in the future because the rapture hasn't happened yet See it? Can you hear it? It's all there. All right, now let's check it out. First Thessalonians 4. I don't have you want you to be ignorant, my brothers. This is a letter to the Christians concerning those who are asleep. That's an idiom for people who are dead. Dead Christians. You should not sorrow after Christians who die. Wow, what a statement. That's unbelievable. Here in America, if a Christian, someone close to them die, oh my gosh, they're in a massive state of mourning. Paul used to do the same thing when he was a Jew. They had periods of mourning. Correct? Long periods. He said, we don't do that anymore. This isn't Judaism, it's Christianity. When a born-again believer dies, they're in better shape than they ever were here. If you went to them and interviewed them and said, would you like to come back and see your family and friends in uh, Phoenix, they would look at you like you were on crack. <laughs> no one that went to heaven would ever come back here for any reason. It's that great. Now that causes a lot of people to get angry at me, but listen. Well, I can't believe you said that. You mean they don't want to come back and see their loved ones? No, they do not. They don't have any loved ones anymore. <laughs> They're waiting for you in glory. They can see the throne room. You know what I see? You sitting on that chair. <laughs> no offense. Listen, it's perfectly logical when parents in our society now go on vacation or on a cruise or whatever, they're not thinking about the kids back at home. They don't even know they exist anymore. They're looking for the buffet. <laughs> well, if a person does that as a human, cuts off, doesn't remember, isn't interested, it happens all the time. What would you do if you had glory staring you right in the face? You wouldn't even think about the lost house, the trauma, physical trauma, the car accident, the divorce. None of that stuff even registers anymore when you're in heaven. Nobody cares anymore. It's so good there. Only got one amen out of that. There's a lot of he's in here tonight. <laughs> Paul said, because he had been to heaven, remember that? Yeah. He had visited heaven. And he said it was so spectacular, I can't um, even speak it to you. There were things I saw that were so great, I am not allowed to share it. Nowadays, all these people go on these fake, familiar spirit trips to heaven. They come back and they write a book about it. That's a red flag. It was a demonic trip. Of course, it didn't happen. These people that are going to heaven, 90 and something percent of them are just all fake. They just make this stuff up. Paul didn't make it up, and it was so spectacular there, he couldn't even speak about it. So when your loved one dies, Paul is saying, don't, the Greek word is lupeo, don't be sad if they were saved. Because they're a million times better off than you are. They wouldn't come back to see you for love nor money. Money is no good there. Money is only good here when you have tenants you need to When your relatives die, you don't go into mourning like Jews did. He had left Judaism and went into Christianity, which is what you're supposed to do. You leave Judaism, you leave Buddhism, you leave Hinduism, 
You were, you're a born-again spirit filled Christian, and now you are a Christian. You are no longer a Hindu. Well, there's a shortage of Hindus here tonight, but you get my point. Because when people die without Christ, Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims, right down the line, there is no hope for them. Once you go to hell, you never get out. You never come back and visit anybody, but you'd give anything to come back and visit them. In heaven, you don't want to come back and visit them. No offense. In hell, they would give anything to come back here and be with you. They would give anything to come back and live in a wheelchair and be disabled. They'd come back here in a heartbeat and have cancer. It would be the highlight of their lives to have a good bout of cancer and come back here. When you go to hell, it's the worst thing that can happen to you. And you have no hope, Paul says. There is no hope. You never get out of it. See, The false doctrine floating around now that hell is temporary and all this other crap, all that's lies. Once you go there, there is no hope. And when sinners die, yeah, it's a time to grieve because they were lost and they have no hope. Better get off that. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, those who are dead in Christ, God will bring back with him second coming. Correct? This we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive at the coming of the Lord shall not fathano precede those who are dead. The dead raise first. First Thessalonians 4. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a big splash and the dead go first. Those who are already in heaven go first. They get resurrected first. That's the first resurrection. Here's the second one. Oops. Then, it says, then we which are alive shall be harpazo, means to snatch something from somebody. Give me that. It's not, you mind if I borrow that? Can I, that's not what it means. It means to snatch it out of there. So what it's saying is this rapture thing, the second coming, is some kind of a spectacular supernatural event that's quick, fast. And you go where? Well, you go up. Meet the Lord there. Therefore, instead of mourning over Christians who die, you should be happy for them. They get resurrected before you, Paul is saying. They go first. See? The last shall be first, the first shall be last. So there's no reason to mourn when a born-again Christian dies. You are happy for them. Good for you. When's my turn? <laughs> Death is swallowed up in victory. Friends, if you are a spirit-filled believer and you're living for the Lord, dying isn't a serious problem. It's a promotion. So comfort one another with these words. First Thessalonians 5, a couple chapters later, Paul explains it. God has not appointed That's the Greek word orge. It means the anger of God. But to obtain salvation through Jesus. He died for us so that whether we are alive or dead, we will live together with him. There's no reason to mourn. There's no sorrow. You win this thing. It's like my sister getting a divorce. She won. She thought she was going to get slaughtered. Behold, I show you a mystery. 1 Corinthians 15. We will not all die. 
but he says we will all be changed Correct In a moment again everything seems to happen fast with this system It's not a gradual thing like spreading the gospel this thing happens boom super fast In a twinkling of an eye the last trumpet Last trumpet for what? Well, that's a debatable subject. I think it's this one. Boom, the dead go bang, and then the boom, the last one, we get it. It's the ones that are alive. They will be raised what? With this crappy body? No. We get this spectacular supernatural body. See? Some of us don't need one, but we're going to get it anyway. Okay, you guys are not not catching this stuff quick tonight. <laughs> I'm getting a little depressed because my humor is top of the line. And uh, <laughs> anyhow, incorruptible means things that do not deteriorate. This corruption, Paul says. Now he's pointing to himself. This crappy body will someday put on a glorious body. Immortal immortality The one thing all humans want is immortality All leaders all despots all emperors all they ever wanted was immortality So they make a, a sphinx like them or they make statues like them or they name holidays after them That's as close as you can get to immortality in the secular world in the Christian world. It's real It's real you don't understand you need to stop focusing on your Mickey Mouse life here and start looking forward to your glorious life and getting rid of that piece of crap body you walked in here with. <laughs> this body is susceptible. That body is immortal. That's your future body. Nothing is worth this life and forfeiting this. Nothing, it's not worth it. Is it? If you were Bill Gates and had a. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Bill Gates won't have any money burning in hell. Nothing. He's hopeless. That's right. Bill Gates is in the Bible. <laughs> have you seen his house in Washington? Have you seen that thing? Yeah. It's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. All the rooms are run themselves. You just walk in the room, boop, the lights turn on. Then the temperature adjusts. You walk out of the room, boop, the lights go off, temperature goes down. Everything is echo friendly. It's the size of a football stadium. There's docks and boats and bowling and Every conceivable want of a human is in that house. Everything you'd ever dream of. Having. Right on the roof. Drop dead. Everything is gorgeous. Gold handles. See? The only people better off than him are the TV preachers. But you got your gold <laughs> handles. See, you got your gold seat. That's what I've always wanted. I've always wanted a gold seat on the toilet. So I could just slide over there. <laughs> Everything in Bill Gates' house, top of the line. Period. He lives like the Sultan of Brunei. He looks like a prince of Egypt. He's in the Bible. Yes, sir. A rich man was in the agriculture business. Booming business raking in the crops raking in the dough. He says my god. I don't have enough place to store this stuff I'm gonna tear down that barn and that warehouse and this facility and I'm gonna add to them this one I'm gonna put two stories on that one I'm gonna tear down and make twice as big and then I'll load all my stuff in there No problemo and then what I'm gonna do is retire I'm gonna kick it Yes, sir, I'm gonna be smoking weed I'm gonna be drinking oh scotch whiskey $500 a bottle 
Oh, that stuff goes down smooth. But don't drink it when you're watching a fight. But anyway. <laughs> and then suddenly the Bible says, Thou fool! This night, your soul is required of you. Then, who gets all your stuff? Your kids get it. Well, they do it. They squander it. Why? Because they ain't smart like you. You built this monstrous business. They've been pampered all their lives, so they want everybody to pat their fanny, wash your feet, because they're wimps. They don't have any idea how to run a business. So what do they do? They squander everything you built. Get separated for all the kids, and then they ruin it and lose it. Then we'll all... Who's all... Who's going to get all those things you have prepared, the Bible says? You're a fool. Listen, you're a fool if this is your life. We have another life coming, an immortal life, with new bodies like Jesus' body, supernatural bodies. How do they work? I don't exactly know, but I think you can teleport in them. I do. I think you can teleport. Jesus popped right in the middle of a prayer meeting one time after the Resurrection. He, boop, he said he was right in the midst. And he didn't come in the dope. He just was there. Well, the Bible says we get a body like his. How much like that is, I don't know. It doesn't say, but like means like. So that means if I don't like talking to you, all I got to do is, boop, I'm in another galaxy. All right. Enough of that. But before all this happens, what goes on? The great apostasy occurs. Once again, it's the same process as leading up to the tribulation. It gradually accelerates and gets worse. It says here, let no man deceive you, 2 Thessalonians 2. Uh, the day will not come except there come a falling away, apostasia, first. None of this is going to happen until this happens first. Okay? So that means there had to have been a revival before that. Now we get to the Arizona Deliverance Center, a little place. We're getting a deliverance revival. God already told me I'm getting it. Does anybody else believe me? Well, they may not. Who cares? If God told you something, it's between you and God. It ain't between you and 50 other people. Yeah. There's going to be a revival coming. Because something's going to be revived in order to fall away. You don't fall away from nothing. In my opinion, maybe not yours, there's going to be a great harvest of souls and just like the tribulation disasters, it's already started. The underground church in China right now is booming. The Muslims are getting saved left and right as I'm speaking to you. It starts slow, then it accelerates. Okay? The apostasy starts slow, then it accelerates. It's already doing it. And then it says... The man of sin will be revealed, the son of perdition. Apollomy means, in Greek, the son, the destroyer, the one who is destroyed. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of daimonian demons. To fall away from your faith means you had to have faith to fall away from. These are born-again Christians. Pistis is the Greek word. Same Greek word for faith for a Christian. They abandon their faith, it says, in the latter times. 2 Peter 3. Knowing this first, there shall be in the last days scoffers saying, where is the promise of his parousia, the second coming, his return? Where, where's the promise? It hasn't happened yet. What a joke. 
Then it says, this know also, 2 Timothy, that in the last days, Calipus, dangerous times shall come. Don't you see? It starts gradually, and then it accelerates. Now there's three or four school shootings a year. Kids getting mowed down. It'll accelerate to five and six, accelerate to ten and twelve. It grows. Evil grows. Slowly. Pornography, it grows slowly. See? When I was in high school, you had to have what they called a stag film. And it was made out of film. So you had to have a projector to run the stag film on the screen or the wall. I know what you're thinking. How do you know that? I'd rather not answer that. But anyway, now, click, click. Boop. Okay. Evil accelerates. A falling away, it starts, it accelerates. Danger is coming to us. What danger? It starts slower and that accelerates. It's going to get worse. We are headed toward incredibly dangerous conditions in our society. Now you got a few riots here and there, protests going on. It's going to accelerate. All out riots in the major cities, massive levels of destruction, people going crazy. It's already started. It starts slow, and then it accelerates. And these people will be lovers of their own selves. Narcissists, self-absorbed people, Hollywood, so to speak. They will covet. They will be boasters, arrogant, proud, blasphemers. They will be disobedient to parents. Wow, is that ex is that, has that started? In the 50s, you talk to your parents this way. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Now it's kiss. Disobedient parent. Unthankful. Oh, wow. The best way to make your child unthankful is to keep giving them stuff. Oh, my God. You're dead in the water. You are screwed, blued, and tattooed. You keep giving a kid something, and they will take it for granted. Not in the 50s. Son, did you pick that? No, sir. You want to pick it? Yes, sir. No, I'm not making that up. You think I'm making that up? No, I'm not. That actually used to happen. Nowadays, it's, hey, shove this. Unholy. Unthankful. Oh, my God. Second Thessalonians 2. Remember not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Paul saying, hey, I already explained all this to you. Now you know what withholds that he might be revealed in his time. Now he switches over to the revelation of the Antichrist during the tribulation. And he says, something's holding him off right now, he says. That was 2,000 years ago he said that. Something's holding it back. What is it? Well, that's a good question. For the mystery of iniquity is already working, he says. Only he who now, Kateko, holds it down until he be taken out of the mesos. He is removed from the middle of it. What's he talking about here? Well, let's see. Kateko means to do what? Yeah, you know, when I got my DUI, I didn't need to be hold, held down. I sobered up fast. I said, yes, officer. No, I'm blowing this thing. <coughs> you need to take me somewhere? Yeah, we're taking it. Here you go. I wasn't like some people who see a police officer and go, you know, this is my opportunity to act like a complete fool. And in fact, I'm going to tell this guy what I've been dying to tell my wife for years. <laughs> you mother... I didn't do that. I said, hey, 
I knew I was caught. I just admitted it. When I got saved years later, I'd done the same thing. I was a rotten sinner bound for the fires of hell. When that realization came to me, I headed for the altar. I just admitted it. Like my GUI. Here, let's go. What do I got to do to get through this and not have it happen again? It never happened again. Kateko, something's holding down the Antichrist. What is it? Let's think about it. Well, in Ephesians, the church or the believers are described as a man. In addition, the word body is used to describe Christians. The church. Verse 2 Thessalonians 2. Then, then shall that wicked one be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth, and destroy him at the brightness of his coming. The Antichrist is not getting destroyed until the second coming. Correct? All right. And then it says, oops, excuse me, even him whose coming is after the energia, the power and energy of Satan, he will appear with all dunamis, supernatural power, and Simeon miracles and lying terrors, supernatural events. What's he talking about here? I think he's talking about the false prophet. Then it goes on, the time will come, 2 Timothy, when they will not endure sound doctrine. What's he talking about now? The apostasy, the falling away. That has to come first before this happens. They will not endure sound doctrine. We're right in the middle of it. It's already started. It starts and then it accelerates. Everything starts here and then it gets worse. Correct? False doctrines. The church is loaded with them, loaded with false doctrines. What are they good for? Lust. Yeah. You want to sell books. You want to sell DVDs. You want to sell this and that, and that's your goal. You got to come up with something interesting, something marketable, something spectacular. Correct? Oh, my God. The Lord revealed to me in a vision. Oh, we can go to the courts of heaven. <laughs> what do I got to do with that idea? Well, we got to plan it out, come up with a bunch of crap, put it together in a book, get it in a DVD, then travel around telling everybody about it. We can go to the courts of heaven and plead our case before God. Years ago, they used to call that going down to the altar, but now it's going to the courts. <laughs> I gotta go to the courts of heaven. I gotta plead my case and pr spread it out like a prosecutor. God. And like Jesus de Miranda, who said he was Jesus, he had thousands of followers. Thousands of people follow these false doctrines. They buy the DVDs and the books like it's nothing, it works. People wouldn't be doing it if it didn't work. What lusts? The lusts of the people coming up with these new doctrines. Hey, they're making all kinds of money. They live cushy lifestyles. They love it. They will heap to themselves natho, tickling ears. People who say what you want to hear. Okay? They shall turn away their ears from truth and turn to muthos. What's that? Myths. Stuff you fabricate. Right? So you're a born-again Christian. You come to my service. You saw me on Sid Roth. <laughs> and I got this new book out. The Pastures of Glory. I'm making this up, fuff up as I go along, folks. Just play along with me. The pastures of glory. Oh, this is a special place. God revealed to me through a vision. I went to heaven. I saw it. It's a place that people with anxiety and fears 
can go and find rest and peace. Years ago, it used to be called an altar, but now we've got a pastures of glory. <coughs> Brother Mike invented pastures of glory. Oh, gosh, that's going to sell. Yes, sir. Now, who am I going to market it to? Hmm. People that are all stressed out, fearful sights coming, anxiety coming as the tribulation gets closer. Oh, Brother Mike is playing off some interesting fears of Christians. <coughs> Oh, he's a, I can tell he's a thinker. Okay, now I just made that crap up. That was all crap. I just made it up. I can look up every verse in the Bible that has pastures in it and cr come up with a nice little theme of additional scriptural crap. Like the Jehovah's Witnesses. That's right. I just come up with it and make it say whatever I want. That's a fact. You can do that. Everybody does that. What is that? Pastures of God. That's a myth. I just made it up. I know some of you are very disappointed right now. You were hoping that was a real doctrine. I know you're stressed out. Let me make you even more stressful. America is currently starting this Falling away, becoming apostates. It's currently happening. It starts low and then it accelerates. Everything starts here and then it gets worse. The earthquakes and tsunamis start here and then they accelerate. Correct? In the book of Revelation, meteors are falling out of the sky. It says a third of the people on the planet are killed. That is incredible. That's got to be a meteor that's incomprehensible. But we've had meteors from the beginning of time. Again, they start slow and then they accelerate. See? Sin starts a little bit here, then it accelerates. Yes, sir. Sin started in Cain a little bit here, a little jealousy, then it accelerated in murder. Sin comes in here quietly, then it accelerates. See? A little bit of Playboy when you're a kid. Yeah. You found your dad's stash. You're looking through there, you can't believe it. Wow, these chicks are gorgeous. It starts out with a little bit of Playboy, then it goes to Hustler. Then it goes, it, everything always accelerates. It's happening here in America. All right, let's try and figure this out quickly. Now we have uh, Jesus here. Right? He weeps over Jerusalem. Approximately that date. I don't know if that was exactly the right date. And then he predicts this. Correct? Jerusalem falls. Judaism is scattered all around the world. Right? Numerous prophecies in the Old Testament come alive. Here somewhere in 1948. Wherever that is on the thing. And Israel becomes a nation again. Amazing. Then exactly like the Bible said, the giant exodus occurs again. The exodus from around the planet of Jews going back to the homeland. It's happening right now. Again, it starts a little bit. Everything starts here, and then it accelerates. It's happening, and it's getting greater right in front of our eyes, right? So then the tribulation starts when? I don't know. You have to get the dates from that other thing. But anyway, so let's say somewhere here. And then uh, the rapture, the rapture starts here at the end of the tribulation. Or does it? Does it? All right. I'm not sure. According to the Bible, these things have to happen before the second coming of Christ. Tomorrow cannot be the second coming of Christ. Cannot happen. The Bible says it can't. <laughs> Correct? It says specifically the Jewish temple is rebuilt. 
it starts here and then it accelerates. The Jews already have the architectural plans worked out for the temple. It's, everything's already done. They haven't confiscated the property yet. It's in the plan, right? So the, the second coming can't occur now. He can't come back now. The Antichrist and the false prophet must rise to power. Well, they're not here yet. They're not. I thought it was the Pope. Dude, everybody has all these different people they pick out for the Antichrist. All of them are just like the guy setting dates for the end of the world. All that stuff's poppycock, as Grandpa used to say. No, it's not, it's not the Pope. It's not your ex-wife. It's not, well, wait a minute. Now, let me retract that one now. Everybody likes to predict who the Antichrist is, just like they like to predict the end of the world, and it's always wrong. Why is that? Because the Bible gives you how you can figure out his name. It's based on Either Hebrew, Greek, or Aramaic, it doesn't say. But the total numerical value of the person's name comes out to correct. So in order for you to know who the Antichrist really is, you've got to be here when he comes. Not a good spot to be in. Okay? During the tribulation, you'd prefer to get out of it and not know who he is. Unless you're addicted to names. Okay, that hasn't happened, so the second coming can't be now. Correct? The false prophet's not here, that's for sure. The mark of the beast is not here. Oh, but there's chips they're putting in there. I understand that. You put a chip in your dog, you know where your dog is. You put a chip in your kid, you know where the kid is. I understand that, and that's already happening. But like I said before, it starts here, then it accelerates. It's already happening now, but it accelerates later. Chips, right? Scanners, just like another thing, it fries soon. It's just, it starts here, and then it goes there. What's the Holy Ghost telling you? Hey, these early signs are a warning system for you to get ready. That's what I'm doing now. I'm trying to help you realize that you need to change your life now and get ready. This thing's coming upon us. Well, we know the second company coming can't be now because Mystery Babylon has not been created. Has it? No. It's on the way, though. Things start small, then they accelerate. The religions are starting to come together and unify. See, Chrislam is Christianity and Islam. Correct? Buddhism and Hinduism is now blending together because they have many beliefs and teachings that are the same. See? In order for the Antichrist to take over, he's got to have the religions unified so he only has one shot to take it. He can't go all over the planet getting every different religion. Right? That's Mystery Babylon, Revelation 17. Well, Jesus can't come now. Babylon hasn't been rebuilt. The city, the Bible says, has, is to be rebuilt. What's happening? It's currently under construction right now. It's currently being rebuilt right now. Like I said, everything starts here and then it accelerates. Saddam's castle's been renovated. They're restoring all the, a lot of the old buildings. They've already restored them. But that has to happen before the second coming. Correct? So we know Jesus is not coming back tomorrow. Right? If, if these things have to happen before the return of the Messiah, then these things have to happen before he comes back. If they haven't happened, he's not coming back tomorrow or next month or 2019. I'm 
gets your point. I'm, I'm just about to get to it. Look, Babylon has to be revealed. Antichrist has to be wounded. There must be beast worship set up, right? Israel has to evacuate. Everybody lets Israel down. America is Israel's number one supporter. In the future, America will abandon Israel. We will let them go. The Bible says Israel has to, they leave. They're being attacked by the Antichrist and they're leaving. Well, that hasn't happened yet. Israel's currently bombing in Lebanon. They're still a nation. They're, they're doing good. Right? So we know Jesus Christ can't come back anytime soon. It's got to be a few years away. Whatever a few years is. But, check this out. In Luke 21, in verse 36, Jesus previously went through all this stuff. The destruction of Jerusalem, the Antichrist, the tribulation, the second coming, the destruction, the weather going crazy, the signs in the heaven, and then what does he do? He pops over to the rapture. Check this out. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be accounted what? The taxi out. Oh, what does that mean? That you will be accounted deserving to what? Escape. All these things coming that is to come to pass in the future. What was he talking about? I just told you. In that chapter, he goes over all of it. The tribulation, the second advent. And then he says, if you want to get out of that, you have to do something. If you want to escape it and not go through it. Who escapes? Well, he's talking to born-again Christians. What kind of Christians go in the rapture? What kind of Christians are left behind? Wow. So now we can see there are Christians in the tribulation. Where'd they come from? They're the ones that missed the rapture because they were lukewarm, carnal Indifferent, uncaring Christians. They never became disciples. They are not overcomers. And these Christians here, some of them are one to Christ during the tribulation. So you've got a combination of Christians here. The ones that missed the rapture and the ones that got saved during the tribulation. Including the 144,000. We know they get saved. The Messianic Jews. At a minimum. Why are you going to miss the rapture if it's in our lifetime? Because Nikao, you had to be a conqueror. Over what? Whatever God allowed you to face. Conquering is relative. What you have to face as a Christian is different than what she does. Okay? God doesn't grade you based on her and vice versa. Each Christian is given and allowed to face trials and temptations and tribulations. And they are training vehicles so you will become an overcomer. Gutless, lukewarm, carnal Christians don't like a fight. So they cave. They don't make sacrifices. They won't postpone plans, their will, lusts. They love money. They love this, they love that. They want that, they want this. These people miss the rapture. 
Nowhere in the Bible does it say if you're a born-again Christian you're guaranteed to go in the rapture It doesn't say it anywhere I used to believe that till I started reading the Bible Why would Jesus warn you of this if it wasn't true? What's he doing here? Listen, the apostasy has already started, folks. The tribulation hasn't. See, that it all starts here. Things start slowly, and then they accelerate. They start here. The rapture kicks in here. And then everything accelerates. Hell comes to breakfast. Then the second coming hits. Okay. Now, you believe the rapture occurs at the end of the tribulation, hypothetically. That would be, let's say, here. Correct? That means that the rapture can't happen tomorrow. If the rapture occurs at the second coming, and the second coming has a series of prophecies that must be fulfilled until that happens. The rapture cannot happen tomorrow. That means, as Jesus said, no man knows the date or the hour. Well, that's not really true, is it? Because if the rapture occurs at the end of the tribulation, I can watch these prophetic signs here and get a pretty good idea when this thing's going to go. Right? The truth of the matter is, from my view, the rapture comes before the tribulation because it will come as a thief in the night. And no one will know when it hits the second coming does not apply to that it does apply to the Christians who are in the tribulation who are surfeiting drunkenness covetousness right he warned these Christians here now he's warning these Christians here if you want to escape this living hell you better be counted deserving to go in the rapture if you're a lukewarm Mickey Mouse Christian you are not deserving to go and you miss it because Jesus said he that overcomes sits with me in my throne as I overcame and I sit with my father in his throne. He that overcomes will be wearing white and will rule the nations. On this earth as a Christian, if you can't even control your own house, according to Paul, you're not even supposed to pastor a church. If your family is jacked up, you are not allowed to be a pastor of a church. Apostasy. <laughs> That's what it says. You have to be the husband of one wife. Sorry, Mormons. I know you like a little variety. She's getting old. This one's starting to sag. Bring in that new baby. I get it. I understand the carnal aspects of that. I'm completely understanding of it. No, you can't. That's the sin. You have to be a husband of one wife to be a minister, a pastor, a bishop, a deacon. Correct? Yeah. That's right. Any questions before we close? Any criticism? <laughs> yeah.
these people almost have paid off. What any questions here or criticisms? Comments. Thank you. Go. Who had that mic, Karina? Oh, thank you. What was the question? Hold on, sweetie. Yeah, it's on. Thank you. Yeah, do you have a question? Yeah, the statement that no one will know the hour, I've heard is referencing to the Hebrew and the Jewish culture that that was a phrase that was connected to maybe the Feast of Trumpets or one of the feasts so that they had to watch the skies to see when that activity would happen. And so the presumption is is that we should be able to look to certain feasts and predict when Christ might come back. And we might not know the second, but we can look and say, oh, it's probably at this feast. When How much money did they make off that one? Wow, that's got the courts of heaven beat. Now, that's a bunch of Jewish stuff. They're trying to bring all the feasts back. No, I'm, I'm just using the New Testament here. That's, that's it. I don't know anything about those feasts. Yeah. It does say season. Season is Kairos. That's a season, like a regular season. Oh, and what, I, what I'm thinking that by feasts, they might, during certain seasons, those feasts, maybe that's referencing a season. Not necessarily the feasts. Okay, you might be right there. Yeah, not possibly. That's you know what more I'm about than I do. I don't know. That's my guess. Yeah, and I, I haven't studied all those. Yes, sir. Uh, hi, brother Mike. Quick clarification on the dead in Christ. Are these folks that have passed away and are already in heaven? What about them? Well, I just wanted to confirm that. That's been a source of confusion to me. That Why? Times. Well, I just didn't understand how somebody that was dead and in heaven could be resurrected. Well, nobody understands any of this, to be honest with you. I don't understand it either. I, that's a supernatural event where a person, their inner man is in heaven, and then they're brought down to the earth and reconnected with their body, which is then resurrected and remanufactured. It has to be created on the spot. What if you're cremated? Right. There's no body. It's in an urn sitting, you know, in your neighbor's garage. <laughs> if you don't, if you didn't like the relative, or if you like them, they're in the bedroom. So it's all a supernatural event. I have no idea how any of that stuff works. I'm just a regular person. It's that's why they call them miracles. I don't know how they make that works. It's a miracle. You know, you receive. God's word and it's a miracle and you some of it you have to just take on personal faith how that works at the end of the millennium is the second resurrection where the dead in Satan are raised sinners are raised from the dead their spirits and souls come out of Hades or Hades and they connect with their bodies here and they are then resurrected and go to the great white throne judgment How's that happen? I, I have no idea. That's another same thing. It's a miracle beyond my comprehension. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. How did he do it? I have no idea. That's unbelievable. I can't, as King David said, these things are too high for me. I can't attain unto it. I don't understand any of that stuff. I'm just a person. But I believe it's true because Jesus said it was true. Paul said it was true. So I believe it. That settles it for me. When I was living in sin, I, I didn't have that attitude. I thought it was religion was all poppycock, fabrication, myths, nothing. Anybody else? I was wondering about yeah. the. Yeah, he has it. He has it. Well, the, the YouTubers are listening. Uh, the YouTube. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Yes, sir. I was wondering about the uh, Bible verse that 
speaks of Jesus uh, when someone asks him about the uh, the dead in heaven, and he said, "You neither understand the scriptures uh, because in heaven people are not given in marriage." So that means I won't see my wife in heaven. No, it doesn't. <coughs> it means nobody gets married in it. <coughs> nobody gets married in heaven. Gets married. If you if the husband and wife are born again Christian, they die, they both go to heaven. Yeah, you'll see the person in heaven. But he said there's no procreating in heaven. In other words, humans procreate kids, right? There's, angels don't do that. Spirit beings don't procreate like humans and animals. Yeah, so... Uh, so how, did the, uh, how did the sons of God see the sons, the sons of men and the daughters of men come down as spirits to heaven? Procreate with them. Well, they were angels, fallen angels that did that. And apparently those angels could procreate. And they're all in hell, according to Jude. Maybe they went to somebody's body to procreate. Pardon me? Maybe they went to somebody's body to procreate. Yeah. Well, I doubt it because angels are not like demons. They can't get into your body. Angels can't do inner penetration. Isn't demons fallen, can get... Isn't a fallen angel a demon? No. Fallen angels are angels. Demons are demons. Humans are humans. A goat's a goat. They're all different. I have a question here. So the, the parable of the ten virgins, would you see the five foolish virgins as Christians who missed the rapture? Well, no. Uh, Jesus said, you got to keep your lights burning or you're going to not see the second coming. And at the second coming is the judgment of the nations. And the millennial starts here, which goes a thousand years here. During that period of time, the whole planet is subdued to Christ in Jerusalem. And guess who's doing the subduing? We are. We, depending on what we do now, receive our reward and glory at the judgment seat of Christ. And so we run the planet Earth. We're God's hand extended. And before the rapture, you can miss it by doing those sins. And you can miss the second coming if you're in the tribulation the same way. You've got to keep your light burning. Their lights went out. Christians' lights can go out. Happens all the time. Uh, can can like addiction be eradicated completely by the Holy Spirit, or must you get the Holy Spirit plus get Psychological help like 12 step programs and such and um, Or what are your comments about? Addiction well, it depends on the person, you know uh, Some people are completely delivered from addictions just through the Holy Ghost uh, Others are delivered a combination of the two uh, Others of them go through secular programs and they're able to stop using you know, maybe three or four percent of them actually stop using but they're never cured. So it depends on the person, depends on their own personal desire, their own motivation, their free will, um, how determined they are to be set free. If all those factors are high, the Holy Ghost takes them quickly and heals them. If it's, you know, mixed, well then it takes him a longer time to get the person completely delivered. Yeah, addicts are a major problem because they have these powerful lust demons in their body. And these demons are, they give them almost unstoppable urges to do self-destructive activities. 
it's tremendous uh, sexual desire just surges out of the person the desire for for drugs man it's powerful and on top of that their bodies get addicted to the endorphins and all that other stuff it's a it's a tough road to go so it depends on the person everybody gets healed and delivered at their own pace okay some people take years to get rid of all the demons. Some people are crank them out in weeks or months. It's all depending upon sowing and reaping. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. And the same is true in the secular world. You know, if you uh, work hard in school, uh, you work harder at business, you're a better athlete and more competitive, you have more success. It's a, it's a natural law of the spirit world. Sinner or saint, it's all about sowing and reaping. You know, some, some Christians get saved here and it takes them 25 years to repent. You know, 20 years later, they're still doing the same crappy things they were doing 20 years ago. And the demons are still condemning them for it. Other people catch the Spirit of God and in a few years, they have whittled almost everything off. It's fantastic. So it's all an individual thing. Everybody progresses at their own rate, in their own time, and allows God to do what he wants to do based on the person, not the Lord. The Lord wants to do all kinds of things for you, but the person's free will is the determining factor. It's the key that opens the door. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. That lady right there. Here's your uh, mic. Thank you. Can you explain um, about the double-minded man? Well, that's in the book of James, and it's only mentioned twice in the Bible. And it's, both, it's in James. That's the Greek word dipsychus. It means somebody that has two souls. So a person is born with a real soul at conception, and at birth, you have your own soul. Your soul is where your emotions come out. As you pick up demons over the years, through abuse, through sin, through whatever you're involved in, drugs, demons enter the person's brain and their body, and their goal is to set up a fake soul in the person. And the demons all live in this fake soul, and the fake soul tries to take over the real soul. So you see somebody who has what some people call a split personality. One moment there, the real person's talking to you. The next minute, there's some other person in there. And you don't even recognize them. Their eyes look different. Their face is different. Their, their behavior is different. This fake soul is trying to take over the person. And almost all addicts have a dipsychus, a fake soul. A demonic soul takes over, they lie to their mother, they steal from their loved ones, they end up sleeping in a dumpster. But then later on, the real person sometimes pops up and wants help. Right? That's the real soul they were born with. A double-minded person, a dipsica, is somebody who lives out of the fake soul. Okay? Narcissism, bipolar, schizophrenia. Addictions, this fake soul the demons build into the person in their in their inner man and it tries to take over and in some cases they literally take the person if you go down here to the state hospital down on 24th Street in Van Buren here there's people there that are gone they ain't there anymore the, the second soul took over the real soul it happened in that movie Psycho He's sitting at the end of the movie wearing a, uh, a blanket. Remember, she was sitting in there, and mother started talking. Remember that movie? Came out in the 50s. Yeah. Yes. So um, could you say that the oil in the lamp is our overcoming? 
Uh, no, I, I tell you what, uh, I wouldn't feel comfortable. Here's the problem. When you look at the Bible, the best way to look at it is take everything literal. In spots in the Bible where you can't take it literally, look for the literal truth behind the figurative language. So, in every story in the Bible, if you want to add something into it, you can add something into every little verse. You could make the oil in the lamps Christians that overcome. The oil that's poured out of the lamp could be <laughs> Christians who backslide. The person that sells the oil could, and, you, and it never ends, okay? But it's best to take that story kind of literally and just look for the spiritual truth behind it. Now, she mentioned that story there. On the YouTube channel, I have a channel where I go through the parables of Jesus. The parables of Jesus were created to keep the uninterested person out of the kingdom of God and collect the people that were interested and wanted God. So the parable was set up for somebody who cared to figure it out. The people who don't care and just looked at it, ah, the parable was used to leave them confused. Does that make sense? And that was the purpose of the parables. Jesus said, I speak plainly to you behind the scenes, but to them, they only get it in parables. What was he doing there? He was screening out the masses and the disciples had already been screened out and they were in the inner sanctum so he didn't use parables on them he just spoke plainly he said okay over here thank you I, I just wanted a better explanation of what the difference between um a demon and a fallen angel was because my whole life I've always thought that a fallen angel was a demon. No. And where, were, where does it explain that in the Bible? Uh, it doesn't. Oh, it in doesn't? those words? No, it doesn't. That's why people are so confused about it. But a demon is a disembodied spirit. So, for example, if I had the ability to do it, I don't, I could come up to her, <laughs> reach in there, and pull her spirit out of there. And set it over here. Okay. She would be over here. I then could take the spirit and put it back in there. <laughs> oh, she's back. Angels aren't like that. They have supernatural bodies and they're not spirit beings like demons. The Greek word for demon is daimonion. The Greek word for angel is angelos. They have totally separate meanings and definitions. Jesus cast demons out of people. He never cast angels out of them. Does that make sense? Michael was an angel. Gabriel was an angel. Whoever else is an angel. The demons are different. You'll see some demons coming out of people here tonight in about five minutes. You won't ever see an angel come out of some. Now, if you're a Mormon, Moroni might pop out of you tonight. It doesn't say that exactly in the Bible. It's, a, it's just from observation, watching it in the text. Nobody ever cast an angel out of anybody. And nobody was ever possessed by an angel. Angelos. Fallen angels are the same as their angels. These are God's angels that didn't fall. These, these fell. The ones that caused the women to get pregnant, Jude said, are in Tartarus, the lowest portion of hell, wherever that is. And they're, they're there in prison down there until the great day of judgment. Yes, sir. So 
So they say like when you get a demon and cast it out, you know, um, the demon goes and finds, finds seven more and comes back if you don't fill the house with, you know, um, reading the Bible and such. So if you are reading the Bible and being good, you know, living sin free, well, um, and if you sin automatically, do, does it, do you get progressively worse and worse? Like if you like sin or it, cause I mean, it says the demon goes and finds seven more demons worse than what you had before. Right. Or what, what's the clarification for that? Like, do you just get, get progressively worse if you sin by, you know, like um, doing something bad or whatever? Well, now that's a loaded question there. Uh, the verse you're talking about is in Matthew chapter 12 and Luke chapter 11. Okay? Now, I've personally seen that happen hundreds of times over the years. So, you know, I don't have all the experience in the world. I sure don't know everything, but I know about that more than most Christians would. Okay, pretty confident of that. Uh, no, you don't pick up a demon when you sin. Okay, so the theory is um, people who are go overboard on demons, uh, if you commit one little sin, oh, you got another spirit, and you committed another, oh, there. I've never seen that happen. But if a person gets delivered from drugs or pornography or witchcraft or something serious, and they had serious, powerful demons in them, and they got delivered through the grace of God, and then they go back to witchcraft, that's when it happens. They, they end up worse. As Peter said, it would have been better that you had never heard than to have gone back into sin because the latter state of the person is worse than the first. But if you do your maintenance work like you were talking about, we preachers call it open or shut doors. They like to use that term. So I use it because everybody understands it. You know, if you open a door to a spirit, they'll come in. And that's why sanctification is so important in Christianity because your spirit man is instantly sanctified at the time you're born again. But your body and your mind and your soul is not sanctified, and it goes through a process of sanctification. And if people who don't go through that process stall in sin, they never get the demons out. They don't get the rest of the demons out. The other ones that left come back. A spirit will always try to come back and get in where there's an open door. If you shut the door after you've been delivered, they can't get back in. So if you've got an anger demon tonight and we get it out here, you're free from that bondage. But three days later, you go back and you're yelling and screaming at somebody at work and cussing them out, that spirit will come right back in. They come in through your breath like this. <gasps> And you could get worse anger than you had before you got delivered. I've seen that happen a hundred times, at least. That's why the Bible teaches repentance, sanctification, holiness. Not because God's looking to find something against you. He's looking to find something to save you. He wants you to live a holy life because that's your security and your salvation. And it helps you as any parent would want to help their child. Living in sin and serving demons is going to get the living hell beaten right out of you. And it will continue until you drop dead. The devil will not give you a second chance. He'll smash you. Phew. It's ugly. I've been smashed before. I know what, I know what I'm talking about. Some of you have been smashed worse than me. You know what I'm talking about. Right? Once again... Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. That help? 
Yeah, but if you just sin, you drop your keys, you know, damn it, oh God. No, a, a horde of demons didn't fall in your head. That, that didn't happen, okay? Every, listen, everybody sins, okay? I know that makes me an apostate, but <laughs> I've never met anybody who lives a perfectly sinless life except Jesus in the four Gospels. I met one person that did that, hallelujah, and he was fantastic, to say the least. That's where grace comes in. Grace covers you as you walk this walk of faith, but if you backslide or quit or apostate or you go back into sin willfully of your own free will, grace doesn't cover you anymore. Hell is coming to your house. And you will reap what you are sowing again. And as he said, you will get seven times worse. Some woman's daughter just got delivered from demons and she's thrilled. So whenever your children get delivered or you get delivered, it's, it's thrilling. It really is. When I went through deliverance in 04, I mean, I was... I was so happy. I was so happy. I had terrible lust demons. You know, every woman I saw, I undressed them with my eyes. I would sit and think about them. What kind of nipples do they have? What kind of their breasts do they have? Do they does one droop? Look at their legs. You know, are they bootalicious? I had this lust scanner in my eyes, and, and I hated it. I, I didn't want it. I, I didn't want it. You know, because it's a, it wears you out. You can't go to the mall. You can't. I mean, just you're just constantly scanning for boot, booty and boobs. I mean, it's it's horrible. But I got those lust demons out, and now I see women as people, persons, good people, human beings, uh, co-equals. I see them as not as a commodity, not as something to be used to satisfy my orgasmic needs. See, I see them as a person. Loved by God. But it would have never happened had I not got them lust demons out. I, I had some fairly bad ones. I mean, I knew people that had them a lot worse. And sex addicts have them off the hook. They, are, they live in torture. Sex addiction is a horrible illness. And every sex addict hates it. They hate it. Yes. What does it mean to, when the scripture talks about not laying hands on anyone quickly? Oh, Paul told Timothy that, and uh, in, in the Greek it means suddenly, like this. See, so, <clears throat> if somebody comes down here for prayer, and they know who I am, and they trust me, then I can lay hands on them and pray for them, okay? But... If you don't know who I am or whatever, and I sneak up behind you, be healed. Well, I could transfer a spirit into that person. And in fact, in the prophetic movement, uh, these charismatics, most of them are crackpot kooks. And they are constantly laying hands on each other, and they're transferring spirits into each other left and right. They have what they call fire tunnels. You go in this tunnel here. They have a row of people on either side. And then you go out the tunnel down here, and while you come down here, everybody is putting their hands on you and blowing blessings into you, speaking, downloading. Why well, I've had people come to me, I'm, I don't know, hundreds of them that picked up spirits in those fire tunnels. Because you don't know who that person is that's touching you. They, they could have been on porn two days ago. You don't live with them. You don't know anything about them. Oh, that can't be. What do you mean it can't be? Christians are on porn all the time. What are you, nuts? I mean, it's very common. Or they could be in something else. They could be in witchcraft they don't know about. I mean, there's all kinds of things somebody can get involved in. Well, you don't want to transfer that into somebody and make them ill. You know, you don't let people put their hands on you if you don't know who they are. It's just that simple. That's the way to handle it. You know. Oh, sure. What type of power is that that Benny Hinn is displaying when he slays people in the spirit? 
Well, Benny's like everybody else. Uh, they're usually a mixed bag. You know, the Holy Spirit's moving, and then these familiar spirits move. So, so it's a mix. Like the prophetic movement. They have people getting healed there, and they have people picking up demons there and getting sick. It's a mixed bag. It's the Holy Spirit and the Kundalini Spirit. It's familiar spirits and the Holy Spirit. Mixed in the system together. Okay. And that's you get you get bizarre outcomes when that happens. You know, uh, back in the 90s, the the holy laughter movement hit, and people thought that was the Holy Ghost. It was the Kundalini spirits making everybody laugh hysterically and act like a fool. You know, well, that's not the Holy Ghost. That's not the anointing. The Hebrew word is kabod. And the presence of the Holy Ghost, the real presence, brings awe and reverence, not hysterical insanity. Kabod. The priests that went into the temple when the glory fell, they collapsed or ran out. It was so heavy. In Smith Wigglesworth's book, there was an incident where he was leading a worship service in a church one time. He was just standing up in front going like this. Praying and people were singing in tongues and the glory started to fall in the room. And as it got thicker and more powerful, more people left. They couldn't take it. Well, at the end of it, he was in there alone. Leading a worship, I guess, for himself. I don't know what was, but he was there by himself. Okay, the, the kabod, the real glory of God, doesn't turn you into a hysterical imbecile. It is awesome. My God. See? Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. What is pharmakia referencing? The mixture? What is that in the what's well, a Greek? It's a Greek uh, word in uh, Revelation that is a form of witchcraft that uses uh, accoutrements to it, you know, uh, oils, chemicals, scents, uh, stuff like that. So if you go to a seance and uh, they channel grandpa, sometimes they'll use, you know, different things to do that, uh, different incense and certain oils and so on. The only thing in Christianity we use is the anointing oil, nothing else. It's a symbol of the Holy Ghost. It, the oil can't do anything for you. It's just simply a faithful symbol of the Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost heals. Oil goes heal. But it's a faith symbol. That's all that is. It's not the oil. You can get healed without oil. You can't put the Holy Ghost in the oil box. He'll jump out the box. He's, he's the greatest thing there is, period. Any, anything else? All right, then. Let's, let's pray, then. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Father, uh, maybe I went too long on this uh, teaching tonight. If I did, I apologize for that. But uh, I want to help a couple of my friends tonight. You said about the rapture, watch and pray. And you said that there are some Christians who are not deserving to go in the rapture. That's what you said. And those are the Christians, there's a couple of them here tonight, that have not sold out to the Lord. And I want you to touch them and heal them tonight. And I know you want to, too. The rapture is coming. Uh, I told them what my personal belief was. I didn't tell them I was 100% correct. I told them that I, based on my research, think the rapture is pre-tribulation. And you said to watch and pray that we would be deserving 
to escape all those things that shall come upon the face of the whole earth. So I told them that that was a Christian missing the rapture. And I told them that because I truly believed it. And whether that's true or not, there's some people here tonight that need to make some major changes in their life in terms of sin, doubt, unbelief, things that are besetting sins, the sin that so easily besets us must come out tonight. And every spirit holding on to that sin in their body or their brain, affecting their mind, Affecting their emotions and their soul. Affecting their anointing and their spirit man. Those ugly demons have to come out. Anger. Bitterness. Unforgiveness. Cravings for food and alcohol and drugs and sex. Whatever it is the demons are causing, it must come out tonight from every Christian who wants to be healed. And I believe there's several people here that want to be healed. There's several people here who do want to go in the rapture. They do not want to be left behind, like that book that guy wrote, Left Behind. That is something that I don't want to have happen to me or my family or anybody that ever comes to the Deliverance Center. I want everybody to be ready to go. Watch and pray. So you would be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come upon the face of the whole earth. Raise your hand if you need to be rebooted so you are counted deserving. There's sin in your life. and Raise your hand. I don't need to pray for you. There's sin in your life and you need to make those changes <coughs> now. You need to do it now. Because... The rapture could happen at any time. The second coming cannot. The rapture can happen at any time. There are no scriptures in the Bible that have to be fulfilled for the rapture to happen. It can happen at any time. Father God, you saw the hands that were raised. Thank you for those sincere people. It takes a little guts and a little courage to raise your hand and to repent of your sin. It takes a little guts and a little courage to get rid of demons you've been carrying around since you were a child. When you were abused, when you were hurt, when you were disappointed, when you were raped, whatever it was. It takes some guts to do it because the devil is going to try and stop them from doing it. But they raised their hands and I believe in the name of Jesus. They will be cured tonight. I'm asking you for it. I believe it. I believe in the mighty power of the Holy Ghost. I saw you work in Los Angeles on Skid Row. Those people that you were delivering on Skid Row last Saturday were far more sinful than any person in this room. These people were hardcore, nasty sinners. And you, you healed them, Lord. You saved them. You healed them. You delivered them. So I know through personal experience, nobody's out of your range. Nobody who wants help. No one who comes for help. No one with an open and broken heart. Every single person like that can be delivered and healed. I know that. I know that. All right, now if you raised your hand, I'm going to come down the front here so we can pray for you. Tonight's your night to change your life and to turn this thing around before the rapture hits and you are left behind. When the rapture hits, you don't want, you don't want to be home scanning porn. You don't want to be yelling at a relative, cursing and swearing at somebody at work. That's the last thing you want to do when the trumpets start sounding. There's trumpets that are going to sound, and you're going to be left behind. That's not going to happen anymore. That's not going to happen. You're going to repent tonight. You're going to repent tonight in the name of Jesus. Let's do it together. Come on now, let's do it. 
Let's take a second to just relax for a second. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. Just close your eyes and let's pray. And the Bible requires you to confess your sins. Confession means to, lalao in Greek means to speak it out loud. Okay? You don't have to yell it, but if you speak it out, that qualifies as confessing it. And if you confess your sins, the Bible says that God is faithful and just, and he will forgive you of your sins. Number two, you have to repent of that sin. Matanoeo in Greek means that you stop doing it and not go back to it. Are you willing to stop it today? You say, well, I'm an addict and I can't stop. That's okay. You have to be willing to stop. The Holy Ghost requires you to be willing to stop, even if you can't stop. Would you be willing to stop in the name of Jesus? Would you be willing to stop? A gal over there asked me about laying hands on people. Did you pick up a transfer spirit at a church service a week, a month, a year, a decade ago? Did, you, did that happen to you? Did somebody put their hands on you? You didn't know who they were. They came up to you suddenly. Can I pray for you? And then they put their hands on you. Come to find out that person was infected with familiar spirits or religious spirits or false spirits of prophet or something else, kundalini, and it transferred into you. You remember that day? You felt a little different after that service. You felt a little odd that night. Your dream life changed a little. Your temper changed a bit. You notice a little subtle changes in your personality. That's a transfer. That's a transfer. That's dangerous. It's extremely dangerous to have a transfer spirit. You committed an adultery years ago, and you picked up a transfer from your lover. You were dating somebody, you were engaged, you started premarital sex, you went to an escort, you went to a prostitute when you were in the military, you picked up a transfer. From her or him. You slept with some guy you should have never even shaken hands with. Remember that? You picked up a transfer. You went back to visit your family and they, they abused you. And you became emotionally distraught when you were around them. And that was an opening for the spirits to come back in from your dysfunctional family. Remember that? You went home for the holidays or something happened and you got emotionally distraught over a family member who was verbally or physically abusive. Remember that? That transferred. Okay. Now let's go ahead and forgive them for that. Okay. Father God, I forgive every person that laid their hands on me, every person I slept with, every person that abused me, whoever it was. I forgive them right now for transferring a spirit in my body. I forgive them, Lord Jesus. I ask you to help them. I ask you to forgive them. I forgive them. And I ask you to forgive me. If I committed adultery and picked up a transfer with my fiance, with my ex, with whoever it was, I am so sorry. God, please forgive me. In the Old Testament, you are not allowed to get back together with an old spouse because of transfer spirits. Transfers. If your spouse left you, slept with somebody else, you could not remarry that spouse. And it was because of transfer spirits. They go out and pick up demons, then you take them back in. You took them back in. Just repent of it right now. God, forgive me. Please forgive me, Lord. Please help me. I'm so sorry. God, have mercy on my soul. God, have mercy on my soul. Come on. Lord, I pray right now for godly sorrow to touch your children right now so they can be healed. Godly sorrow. Heal Jesus. 
godly sorrow for what they did. The fear spirits hang around in the stomach area. They hide right there. If you pick up a fear spirit, godly sorrow will remove it. Jesus, I'm so sorry I hurt your feelings. I'm so sorry I disobeyed. I'm so sorry I took it. Come out of there. Come on out. Come out of there. Come out of there, spirit. Come out in Jesus' name. I'm so sorry I got involved with him. Oh, my God. Somebody the devil sent me I thought I was in love with. It was a disaster. Come out of that body right now. There he is. Come on out. Come out of there. There he comes. Come out of that body. Come out right now, quickly. Come out right now, quickly. Ministry team, come on up now. Come on out right now. Sweet Jesus, everything from my family tree leaves me. I have a new family tree, my Heavenly Father's family tree. My old family tree doesn't belong here anymore. Not in this temple. Not in this temple. You stinking drug it. You filthy drug addict. Come out of that body right now. Get out of my body right now. Get out of there. You pervert. You stinking pervert. You chronic masturbating spirit, I bind your powers. You spirit hiding in my brain. Come out of my head right now. Come on out. Get out of my head. Fear demon. I'm not going to die homeless. Not going to die homeless. Come on out. Out, I said. Come out of that body. Come on out right now. Get out of my body. Come out right now. Come out. Come on out right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out right now. Every ugly man, go. Witchcraft spirits, come out of that body right now. Right now. Mind control, come out of my head. Come out of my head. The gift of hate for witchcraft spirits. I hate your guts. Come out of me right now. Get out of my body. Come out of there, you pervert. Come out of his genitals right now. Come out of there right now. Come on out. Come out of that body right now. Mother, I cast you out. Go now. Get out of that body. Come out right now. Come out right now. Go. Kim, go. Come on out. Mother, come out now. Mother, go. Mother, go. Come on out. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out right now. Go now, I said. Go now. Come out. Come out quickly. Come on out. What's in there? What is it? What's wrong with you? Not sure. What's the symptom? What's bothering you? I'm not sure anything. You speak in tongues? Yes. I could try it. Okay, stop. Now your gift of tongue is blocked. Yes? Yeah, so it's easy to fix. Uh, the Greek word is glossa. And glossa is a language like all other languages in that it's made up of syllables. For example, California is four syllables. I know I have, I know I have like scratch and... Um, and <laughs> anger, but it's not necessarily always a demon. They have presence on the outside. How do you know? They don't necessarily always inside. How do you know? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Okay. Now, this is my business. This ain't your business. Oh, no. This is my business. Yes. Now, let's fix your gift of tongues because demons, whether they're on the inside or outside, hate that. Yes. They hate it. Yes. It's like scratching a chalkboard. Okay. So that's step one. Okay? So now just repeat you? after me. No more shot. No, you gotta repent first before I get that, right? No. No? Just repeat oh. after me. Okay. No more shot. No more shot. Cola vele. Cola vele. Shebo shata. Shebo shata. Korashia. Korashia. Bonaba. Bonaba. Now, did you notice that I was using short syllables? You notice I was using a different syllable. Isn't all tongues different? Are all tongues different? Yeah, but it, they're all made up of syllables. Did you notice I was using different syllables? You notice you were using the same ones, rotating the same one. Yours were the same ones. Yeah. Da 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 da. Mm. Da 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 da. Mm. Da 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 da. 
That's the same as English as stuttering. Oh, yeah? You can talk, but your communication is bad, right? If I stutter, I can't flow and talk to you, right? Okay. Now, this time you follow me, and then you add some syllables from your language. Different syllables. Use different ones. Okay. Now use different ones. Different syllables. Different ones. Can you hear yourself using the same ones? I don't think that part about it, really. Okay, now go ahead and repent of that. So you can get your tongues flowing properly so your anointing will go up. Huh? I, I'll just have to pray about that. Okay. So. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't, I, I, you know. Okay. Alright. Uh, now, where's all this stress coming from? Yeah, I think it's the... Where did it well, start? Well, it started when you were a kid. What happened to you? Yes, and, and recently and I got demoted from my work. No, that's not it. What happened when you were a kid? Um, who hurt you? Well, no one, no one hurt. It was more. Um, Did somebody verbally abuse you? Well, I. Where'd the anxiety come from? Just recently. No, as a kid. As a kid. Well, as a middle, I was a middle child, so I was kind of felt like left out. Where okay. I thought my sister and my brother were always favored over me. Okay. What else? About it. Okay. Well, that's a rejection spirit. What happens is the spirit gets into your brain, and the rejection demon tells you you're deficient to the other two siblings. You're here, and they're up there. Yeah. And then the rejection demon tells you you belong there. Yeah. And here's why you belong there. And suddenly you start needing negative thoughts in your mind about yourself. Yeah. And the rejection towards demon my huh? towards, towards your my mother. mother. Okay. Why? She was the one she was the one that would always pick my brother and my sister over me. Right. What was your mother's side, name? Side with them over me. Excellent. What was your mother's name? What? What was her name? Cheryl. Cheryl, okay. I'm just trying to relax, okay? I know that's difficult. Take a big breath. All right. What's your name, by the way? Scott. All right. Lord, here's Scott standing here at the altar, and he's got a good heart. He's a good man of God. But his mother is still living. Uh, who does? Who makes you angry? Well, well. Not her, but the, the idea of being favored over, you know, the rejection. Yeah, that's rejection the demon rejection, telling you. The rejection makes me angry. Not no. Her. Okay. Yes. Now, cl clarifying, the rejection is a person. Rejection? It's a person. No, it's the, it's the idea. No. He yeah. gave you the idea. Yeah. The person, the demon, got into your brain from your mother. The demon is the person, the demon is not my the, the demon is a person. Yeah, we're talking about the demon, not my mother, right? Correct. Okay. He used your mother to yes. get into you. Yes. Right? Yes. Like he used those people at work to hurt you. Yes. Okay, now we're on the same page. Yes. Now just try to relax. Just relax. Okay, just relax. Now, Father, the man of God is standing here, and he's got spirits from his mother. They're hiding in there and here. Okay? And the demons keep him talking all the time and keep him collating stuff all the time so he never gets ahead. He's too busy analyzing and collating everything instead of receiving healing and deliverance. Now he's already wasted three decades almost and it's time to stop wasting his life. Now his mother does not belong in there anymore. He has a heavenly father now he doesn't have a need for a mother or a dad. Okay? So right now, Lord, we have to forgive his mother for what she done, preferring the other two siblings over him. We need to forgive her right now. Is she still alive? 
Okay, Father God, I want you to hunt up, hunt down his mother right now. And I want you to forgive her. You come out. I want you to forgive her. I want you to tell her you love her. I want you to tell her she doesn't ever have to hurt anybody ever again. That you care for her. And I'm asking you, Lord, to give him the gift of repentance now. To repent for all the bad feelings he had for his mother. Because the Bible says, if you dishonor your parents, a curse falls upon you. Okay, go ahead and repent for what you've done to your mom. It's just a lousy repent we just hear your mom, go ahead and repent of it. What's going on in there? Uh, honestly, uh, I've been much better with like not lusting, but I can still tell there's something that it wants to, to do that. Yeah, I had that too. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, also, um, like before I kind of fell a little bit, uh -huh. kind of, before I fell back into sin, I, uh, I had like really, really uh, strong gifting, right? And I still can walk. Gifting for what? Like I've uh, just like accidentally delivered a guy from a demon one time. It was like walking by me. I just whispered in Jesus name, come out. And the guy literally yanked his whole body. And oh, wow. And so like, what's going on there is you have a powerful spirit man in there. And God was sending you a little um, red flag. He said, hey, you have that change. That's what it is. You've got a bright future ahead of you. Yeah. Now, lusting is not the problem. There's a root to it. It's what's the root? Who rejected it? Uh, I think it was kind of like my childhood was so messed up that there's no time or anything like that. It was like constant rejection. From who? Uh, everybody around me, pretty much. Like my, uh, my dad abandoning when I was like two. And I'm not, it's not a pity party right here, by the way. But my dad abandoning when I was two. I was with him. My mom was constantly, uh, it was con like my name, like I felt like I was always like, dumb ass, dumb ass, idiot. You know? Yeah, yeah. And then my brother was kind of friendly too. He's a little so, how many people would you say it was? Okay. How many people what? How many people treated you that way? Uh, and Mom my, and dad? Then my, well, my friends, when I got older, like teenagers, it was like I was the type of person like where, you know, at, at parties or people hey, were joking. Come here. People were like joking. Hey, around. that guy's got brain demons. Yeah. Uh, he was jumping around yeah, and not listening. Him, yeah. Those are spirits in the brain, okay. and they control his mind. Yeah. So, once they start uh, rebelling and not listening, Pray a blessing over them. Let them go. Okay. Get them out of there. Because okay. they'll they'll try to suck your time out of somebody that really needs help. Like this guy. He's a sincere person. Needs help. Okay. But if that demon and that guy can get you wasting your life over there with the brain demon case, they'll talk for hours. Yeah. And then you'll tell them something and they'll contradict you. Or then they'll start explaining it to you. I mean, it's that guy had all the symptoms. Yeah, well, He's like moving around right like now. moving around like this. Just and he was telling, telling you this and that. <laughs> Just tell me right now. You know, What's Papa from? Just like what he preached, he said right now. I mean, the hands are you. I know you have, but you're too close to me. That was a spirit in his head. Yeah. So get rid of them quicker. Oh, yeah. So you can get to somebody that has some real value. I don't mean moral value. I mean, who's going to respond? Yeah, someone that wants to. Yeah, now here's the deal. How many people trashed you when you were young? Um, my mother, my, my brother, uh, and then when I was uh, all my friends, really, mainly the one person that I can name, name down is well Tony and Kyle. Your friends, Kyle. Yeah, and I was the type of person I would like not say anything at all. And then inside, I would want to say the most horrible thing about keeping my mouth shut just because I knew that was too far. You know, it's like well, we come we'd come, like he'd be like, "Hey, what's up, loser, idiot, moron, right?" Something like that. And I like, I was so. Sensitive. How old were you then? Oh, like from like, I've known him since I was like nine. Nine, I mean, he was okay. Four years older than me, so it was like him oh. and his twin brother. They, they were like the kind of guys that looked out after me. Oh yeah. But it was like I, instead of having like a, like well, most people would get kind of like thick skin, I for some reason didn't have the ability to do that. I was like real sensitive, so mm -hmm. I just kept like I didn't want to hurt him back, so I would just not say anything at all. And then eventually I would every once in a great while I would just blow up on the person. But, yeah. Now what happened here was this guy here was born with a very sensitive spirit man. And he has enormous spiritual potential.
Okay, but the demons saw him and they said, hey, we can't let this guy out of the bag. We got to we got to keep him bagged. Mm -hmm. So they told his mom and dad and brother and all these different. And then when he went to school, they just recruited a new series of humans. The demons did to trash the guy because they knew he had a sense of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And so they knew they could wound him. And he fell for it. And now he's scarred for life. He's got this massive call on his life, and he's down here in the dump. He's working in a dumpster, and he's been called to a penthouse. Okay. So the only way to get out of that is to make that list of people in your mind right now, and then you use Matthew 5.44 on each single one of them. And you have to do it aggressively and like you really mean it. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you, right? Timmy, and you got to take honest, each one of them. This keeps popping in my mind. I feel like I should say this to you. Mm -hmm. Is uh, when I was three, I was sexually abused, uh, and I, I like my brother was too with me at the same time. Who did I, it? My uh, uncle. Uncle, and, what was his name? Uh, Adrian. Adrian. Okay. And for some reason, I like knew it was wrong. I think I, I feel like that might have probably affect me more than I think. And I, uh, I want to tell you this also. When I've been praying for the past couple of days, I got deliverance here last night, and it was the first time I actually got. I mean, I, the thing was like trying to speak, mm -hmm. and uh, I kept, he, he, he's uh, he's trying to build a second soul in there, as I was okay. talking about earlier, and take over his mind because this guy's spiritually dangerous to them. Uh, and for some reason, I don't know if I should say this, but I. I I feel like one of the names is, uh, this sounds weird, but maybe I should, uh, Je Jezebel, I keep getting that word. Now, I think that might be from sleeping with the girl after I was sick. Okay. From... Now, here's the, that's the, the girl's not the problem. Right. When he was three years old, he got molested, and a lust demon transferred right. in to here, this area here, right. okay? Now, he's got problems. How old are you now? I'm 29. 29. He's still got lust problems. Okay. But I haven't done that in three months now. Standing from that. No, I'm, ta I'm oh, not talking about that. I'm talking about the, the oh, urges wrong. from the, the demon. Right. To, it's trying to push him there. Oh, right. He's fighting yeah, it. You're fighting it. But this oh, yeah, thing's... Fighting fighting so, the uncle's name was what? Adrian. Adrian's in there. Yep. So, you, so go back to there at age three, and now he's got to get Adrian out. Okay? And then the second thing he has to do is do that praying for the people that abused him. But it looks like Adrian, the demon, was the first thing that got him. Okay. And it started the dominoes, right. or the avalanche, I guess I should say. Right. It started going then. Right. Okay? And close your eyes then. Just take a big breath. you got to get them to relax. Okay. They have to totally relax, because <laughs> if they're all tensed up, they can't receive anything. Okay. So if I get them to relax, then uh, they receive better. Okay? okay? And then he asked, is Adrian still alive? Yes. Yeah. Okay, he's, we've got to pray for Adrian, Matthew 5, 44. Okay. And, and then, then cast Adrian's demons out of the deck. No, you're not stripping me of power. You get out of that body right now. You're not stripping nothing. You're coming out. You stinking pig. You pervert. You homosexual. You queer demon. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come on out. Lusting after children. You get out of that body right now. Lusting for animals. Come out of that body right now. Come on out. Pig demons, out. Come on out. Pig demons, come out of his testicles right now. Come out of there. You sexual pervert. Come out of there right now. The demon that likes perversion and thinks it's a joke and laughs about it, you come out of that body right now. Come out of his back, right out of his spine. Come on out. Come out right now. He commands you to go now. I command you to go right now. I am not a pervert. I am not a pervert. I'm not going to die alone. No love. No companionship. Nothing. That's what you're going to do to me. You're stealing my life and wasting it. No family. No one to love. No spouse. No money. No career. Nothing. You're stripping me of everything in my life. And God has everything waiting for me. If I turn on you. Well, tonight I'm going to turn on you. 
I'm not going to die a total loser. I'm not going to do it. I refuse to do it. Die a total loser. My parents are taking care of me. They'll be gone soon. I'll be broke. I'll have to get on Social Security. I have no friends. Nobody likes me. That's all the devil. That's all the devil. Are you going to take that? You're going to take a life of nothing? You've got to be kidding me. That's amazing. If the devil had taken everything from me, I'd be mad about it. I'd be angry about it. You mean to tell me these demons have talked you into being okay with it? You're okay with being a nothing and a nobody? You've got to be kidding. You're okay with having brain demons running around arguing with, about Christianity with people? You're okay with that? You're okay with being a spiritual loser for the last 10 years? You've got to be kidding. No, you're not okay with it. You are not okay with it. That's step one. That's step one. You've got to not be okay with the devil. You're not okay with him. You're not going to roll over this time. No. You're not going to roll over this time. You're not doing it. Oh, you got delivered. You seen me before? No, I saw. I saw. Uh, was it Randy or Ricky? Ron? Ron? No, it's the other one. Rick, big guy. Rick, yeah. Oh, you oh, saw him? Yeah, I saw him once, and this is my first oh. time coming in. Oh, it is. Oh, great. What's your name? Angel. Angel, you speak in tongues? You speak in tongues? That's a no. Raise your hands there. Just repeat after me. Gora Vasha. Ola Masevo. Gora Mashivala. Gora Baba Shandara Vasite. Andara Mashandara Vah. Silola. Any syllable. Speak it up. Good. Perfect. Keep going. Getting going. All right. Uh, hey, what you need, honey? What's wrong with you? I was just explaining to her that I pretty much got a diagnosis, and I've been researching a lot about What's the diagnosis? Um, MS. Oh, MS. Okay, now MS uh, is a in in the soul. It's in the soul. Did you used to hate yourself when you were younger? Why? Um, I didn't feel worthy. I didn't feel worthy for many reasons. And at what age did that start? Um, super young. My, my dad kind of thinks... You mean like kindergarten? <laughs> grade school? Probably, probably, um, probably a junior high-ish grade school. Now, uh, junior high-ish. And your dad was the one that started that concept? Yeah. Was he verbally abusive to you? Yeah. Was he critical? Very. Did he make fun of you? No. No, he was just verbally... Was he a nitpicker? Hey, you didn't yeah, do this right or that yeah, right? Yeah. Very, okay, what was his name? Um, Jose. Jose? Jose. Okay, is he still alive? No. He's dead. I, I forgave him. Okay, raise your hand. Father God, what's your name? Stella. Stella. Okay, Lord, see this beautiful woman here? She has got rejection demons from her dad. And he's dead now. And that rejection spirit let in the demon of death. Multiple sclerosis. And right now she's going to repent in the name of Jesus of ever, ever hating herself. She's going to forgive her father and cast his demons out of her. He transferred that rejection spirit in there. And that rejection spirit led in the MS spirit. And she is not going to die at 60 pounds, unable to move or feed herself or go to the bathroom, laying in a hospital bed or convalescent home. It's not going to happen. But her dad must come out of there first. In the name of Jesus. If he was standing right here right now, we would all pray for him and bless him and forgive him. He's dead and he can't do it. 
But if he could, Lord, we would do that. We would do that. Because he was abused as a child. He was hurt and wounded. He had nobody to help him. I understand her dad. She understands him. He sinned. And we're forgiving him. His name was Jose. Jose, in the name of Jesus, your daughter forgives you and releases you from her soul. Come on, let your tears go. Let them go. She releases you from her soul. And your rejection demon must come out. Come out right now. Take a big breath. Come out. Come on out. Spirit of rejection. Spirit of dad abuse. Like oh, brother, I'm going to need to find that out. <coughs> Is that your wife? You guys together? Oh, okay. Huh? Now, what do you need, hon? No, just you. Come here. Yeah. What, what's wrong, honey? What? The marriage is bad? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Well, no, no, we just have our arguments. You have arguments? Huh? And we just wanted to stop. Okay, now, listen to me carefully. Okay? I want you to try to relax with us. Can you do that? Okay. Now listen. Come out of her body. She doesn't want you, you snake. Come out. You have a very sensitive soul. You, you're emotional. You, you feel things easily. Correct? And you're basically a good person. Correct? Okay. How long have you been married? Eight years. Okay. Now, your husband has spirits in his brain. Okay, these spirits in his brain will win every argument you ever get involved in. They will talk and talk and talk and talk. They will come up with this and that and this and that. And it causes nothing but disappointment and strife. The mistake you're making is that the spirits in his brain are different from him as a person. Was he like that eight years ago when you married him? When did it change? Was it soon after the marriage? Okay, now, now just stop that right now, just for a second. I'm trying to help you. I know my business. You have a wounded soul in here, okay? You're not the type of person that does well arguing and fighting. Correct? Okay. Now, are you a Christian? How do you know that? Because I accepted Jesus in my life, and, um, and I have my Bible, and I repent my sins. Okay, now that's not it. Uh, <laughs> Now just close your eyes now. You have to become a true born-again Christian. And I'm going to pray for you right now. Just take a big breath. Big breath. Breathe out. Sweet Holy Spirit. She has... Uh, just keep breathing. I'll pray. Breathe. Add a girl. What's your name? Rochelle. All right. Lord, Rochelle is standing here. Just relax. Take a big breath and relax. Rochelle is standing here, and she needs to receive the Holy Ghost. And she needs to have this terrible stress removed from her soul. The demons are trying to wear her out. And they're hurting her. Disappointments, heartaches, strife, stress, all of it. Let your tears go. Come on, there it goes. It's coming out now. Thank you, Jesus. Every demon from her husband must come out of her. All the strife and arguing, all the religious insanity. Come on out. 
There, let your tears go. Spirit, come out of there right now. Come out. Spirit of rejection. Spirit of rejection. Come on out. Come out of her. Keep breathing. Let your tears go. Come on. You're getting healed now. That's the Holy Spirit coming on you right now. Come on. He's touching you right now. Feel that? That's the Holy Ghost touching you. You're becoming a true born-again Christian tonight. Come on. Take a big breath. Holy Spirit, come in and help me. Holy Spirit, come in and help me. I love you, Jesus. And a girl. Tell him you love him. And a girl. There you go. Good. That's the Holy Ghost coming on you. Raise your hand, sweetheart. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Tell him you love him. Tell him you love him. And a girl. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, dear Lord. I love you. Heal my soul, Lord. Heal my soul. I have a broken heart. I have an exhausted soul. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of listening to it all. I'm tired of seeing nothing improve. Nothing ever gets any better. Year after year, it's just another year of wasted time. God, heal me. Thank you. There, let your tears go. Come on, sweetie. That's the Spirit of God on you. There you go. He likes you. The Lord likes you, honey. Thank you, Jesus. I release my husband to the Lord, and I let him go and give him to God. No more arguments. No more strife. Those are demons talking to me. I'm not going to listen to that. I receive the Holy Spirit. Go. I receive the Holy Spirit. There it is right there. Feel that? That's him touching you. Thank you, Jesus. Clean her mind out, Lord. Heal her. Thank you, Jesus. I command the spirit of fear hiding in her body right there to come on out. Come out of there. Spirit of fear. Fear of her future. Fear of her life. Fear of getting up in the morning. Fear of living another miserable day. Come out. Come out. Right now, fear of this miserable existence. Go. There it is. Keep blowing. Blow. Come on out. Let your tears go. Come on, sweetie. Good. Come on out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Heal my soul. There you go. There it is. Satan, let her go. Satan, loose the woman of God. I command all the misery of her childhood to come out. There it is. Come on out. Go. <laughs> Sorrow and sadness. Both parents. Come out. All the rejection. Come out. All the criticism. Criticizing. Come out. There it is. Keep coughing. Come on. Here it comes. Oh, jeez. Hold that. Keep coughing. Come out now. Keep coughing. Go on. Come out. There they come. Glory to God. Come on out. Every spirit, come out of there. Come out right now. Keep coughing. Come out, devil. Come on out. Come out right now. Come on out right now. Come out right now. Come on right now. Come out of there. Get out of that body right there. Just keep coughing. Come out right there. They come. They're coming out now. Spirit of rejection. Demons from your mother. Demons from your father. Come on out. There it is. Come out. There it comes. Glory to God. Come on, sweetheart. Tonight's your night to get healed. Go. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. And a girl. Come on out, devil. Come out, Satan. Come out, Satan. Come out of there. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. There they come. Get out of her body. Misery and sadness and sorrow. Come on out. Come out. Come on out. There it comes. Glory to God. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Just sit down, sweetheart. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Keep coming. Spirits, come out in Jesus' name. There they come. Glory. Come on out. Go in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out of her legs. Come out of her back. 
Come on, over head. There it comes. Come out. Come out. Quickly. Quicker. Get out of there. Come on out. Thank you, Jesus. Go, devil. Go. Every spirit from your mother. Come on, out of body right now. Mother. Go. Go. Every demon from your dad. Go. Come out. Get out of body. Go. Come on. There he comes. Glory to God. Every one of them. Come out. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Come on, her stomach. Come out of her womb. Come out of her womb. Come out. Husband demons. Come out right now. Come out. Come on out. Get out of the body right now. Come out. Come out. Adultery. Go. Adultery. Come out. Come out. There they come. Every ugly man that ever touched your body comes out now. Go. All of them. Child abuse. Go. Child abuse. Come out. Come on out. Come out of there. Child abuse. I command you to come out of that body right now. Come out of there right now. Go. Come on out. Get out of there. Verbal abuse. Come out. Verbal abuse. Come on out. Verbal abuse. Go. Come on out. Get out of there. Keep coming. Quickly. Come out quicker. There they come. Come out of there. Come out of her stomach. Come out of her stomach right now. Come out of her vagina. Come out right now. Go. Come out of her breast. Come out of her throat. There it goes. Glory to God. Come on. Out. Come on out. Quickly. Come out quickly. Hurry up. Get out of that body right now. Go. Go now. Come out of her face. Misery and sadness. Go. Misery, sorrow, and sadness. Come on out. All of it. Everybody I ever hated. Come out of my body right now. Everybody I ever hated. Childhood. Adulthood. Come out. Hatred for people abusing me. Hatred for people hurting me. Come out. Get out of her throat right now. Every spirit from your husband, come out of there right now. Every one of them. Arguing. Strife. Not listening. Disobeying. Go. Come out. Right now, Lord. Right now. All of them out. Come out of her throat. Quickly. Come out of there. Quickly. Sleep problems. Come out. Insomnia. Come on out of there. Quickly. Come out. Demon of fear. Insomnia. Come out of there. There it goes. Come out. Get out of my legs. Come out of my legs. Come out of my legs right now. Oh, come out of my neck right now. Get out of there. There he comes. There he comes. Get him out of there. Get out of my neck. There it comes. Go in Jesus' name. Get out of her neck. Come out of her neck right now. Hurry up. Come out of her neck right now. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Keep coming. Come out of her neck. Every vertebrae. Come out of them vertebrae right now. Go. Go. Come out. Go. Come out of there. Hurry up. Come out. Arthritis, fibromyalgia. Go out of that body. Chronic pain. Go. There he comes. Chronic pain. Go. Come on out of there. Thank you, Jesus. Come out of there right now. Come out of her throat. Out. Out here. Come out. Quick. Come out. Legion. Go. 
Come out. Legion, go. Out. Out. Hurry up. Hurry up. Get out of that body. Come out of that body. There it comes. There they come. Honey, you're getting a miracle tonight. You're getting a miracle from God. Be healed. Come out, devils. Go. Honey, this was your night to get healed. This is your night. You came here tonight and didn't know that God planned on you getting healed. Okay? You have to let him go. Let him go. He's, they've taken over his mind. You can't win an argument. You never will. He, will, he cannot change. The, the, his demons are trying to ruin you. It's a plot. You want to live? Do you want to live? Get him out of there. Come on. Out. Out you go. Out. I really, there he is. I release. I release. My husband to the Lord. I give him to Jesus. And I let him go. I love him. And the Lord loves him. And I release him to the Lord. Right now. No more arguments. No more fighting. You cannot win arguments with spirits. They never get tired. Now come out. There he is. Keep coughing. Come out. Keep coughing. Come on out. Come on out. There it is. Keep coughing. Come on out. Every spirit, come out of there. Hurry up. Hurry up. Get out, buddy. Come on, sweetheart. You tell him to come out. In Jesus' holy name. By the power of the Holy Ghost and the word of God. Come out of me. Every spirit from childhood till now. Go. Come out. That should do it. Come out of here right now. Get out of there. Come on out. There it is. Come on out. No, here it comes. There it is right there. Come on. There you go. Come on. Do you speak in tongues? You do? Okay, go ahead. No, stop. Okay, now your gift of tongues blocked too. It's blocked. It's worse than his. Okay? So just repeat after me. It's easy to fix. Just repeat after me. Gorava. Kelosata. Bonama. Did you notice that I was speaking in short syllables and you were you were running yours all together? Did you notice that? Did you notice that? I was using short syllables like uh Arizona, Arizona, four syllables. Koraba, three syllables. Yours were all running together. You notice that? Okay, that's blocked tongues. Blocked. So that blocks your prayer life and it holds down your anointing. It's easy to fix. Okay? So now this time you follow me and then you use the syllables from your language and just use different ones and relax and let it go. Korashata Velo Masima Atubasha Hora Basheke. Come out, devil. There's another one coming out. There it comes. Come on out, you spirit. Come out of there. Come on out. Come out. Stop blocking your gift of tongue. Stop it. Come on out. Come on out. There it is. Come on out. Quickly. Come out quickly. Quickly. Come out. Every one of them. Let's go. Out the door. Out. Come on. Get out of that body. Get out of that body right now. Come out. There they are. Keep coughing. Come on out. Here we go. Come out of there. Come out right now. Come out right now. Hey, did those demons from your dad come out? I, I don't know. Oh, you see how they're coming out of her? Yeah. Okay, just close your eyes and relax. Try and relax. Take a breath and blow. 
Lord, I hate this spirit of infirmity that got into my body and gave me multiple sclerosis. He's trying to kill me. He's going to tear my autoimmune system down. He's going to ruin my lungs. He's going to attack my... Keep going. Have a seat. Keep going. He's going to attack my muscles and leave me bedridden. I do not receive that. I'm not going to receive that. I want that spirit out of my body. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, now just scream at him in your head. In your head. Scream at him. Get out. Keep blowing. Get out. Come out. Get out. Come out of my head. Come out of my lungs. Come out of my body. Generational curse, I bind your powers and I break your power. Come out right now, quickly. Come out right now, quickly. Come out right now, quickly. Quickly. Uh, will you help finish her? Hmm? No, he's got brain demons. He's crazy. That's her husband. Yeah, it's awful. Can't help her finish up here. What are you thinking about? Commending him to get out. Do you have demons? I believe uh, maybe. I mean, isn't that the root of sickness? Okay, well, like let's just do this. Yeah, but there's some doubt in your mind, so let's go to that first, okay? Okay. Lord, I need you to tell her in any way you choose, obviously, whether or not she has demons and whether or not MS is caused by a spirit that gets into the body. She needs to know that for sure. And if she does have a spirit, I ask you to give her the gift of hate for that demon to get him out of there at any cost. I want you to tell her. Mind control. Come out. Mind control. Let go. You with her? In Jesus' name. What's wrong with her? Mind control. Come out. What's wrong with her? Why is she here? Is that your wife? Yeah. What's wrong with her? <coughs> Kundalini. She got Do you know what's wrong with her? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh. Just is that your husband? Yeah. You, okay. Mind control there too. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's wrong with you, sweetheart? Uh, I have fear, not strong fear issue. Fear of what? Then, what triggers uh, it? Fear of rejection. Fear of fear of rejection from what? From fear of rejection. You just said you had fear of rejection. I, I said fear of rejection of what? People. Are oh, you afraid of people? Why? Lonely, I, I feel lo lonely, isolated. You feel lonely and isolated? Okay. Now, were you hurt as a child? Who hurt you? Yeah. Uh, uh, Who hurt you? My parents and teachers. And, uh, now, what did your parents do to you? Well, my father was violent. Will he physically hit you? He was hitting my mom first. Oh, okay. And, uh, Did you watch him do it? Hmm? Did you see your dad hitting yeah, your mom? Yeah, yeah. Did that scare you? Yeah, and he was uh, yelling at me. He, he would yell at you? Yeah. Okay, what's your father's name? Akinobu. Akinono? Akinobu. Akinobu? Yeah. Okay, let's get him on there. Yeah, we are afraid. You want to pray with him huh? now? Now, did, did he come out? No. She keeps doing this. Oh, now listen. Oh, you went to Bethel. Okay, now we got that's a secondary problem. Okay, the main problem is your dad hurting your mother and hurting you. Okay, and so you need to to pray hard for him. Is he still alive? Yeah. Okay, but raise your hands and let's pray for him. Father God, we we lift up her dad to you. He. Uh, nice to see you. He. 
hurt his family. He hurt his wife. He hurt uh, his daughter. He hurt her bad. And she had many nights where she couldn't sleep because of it. She heard her mother screams. Those screams went right into her soul. And we need to pray for him and forgive him for what he's done. And she has to do it. Dear Jesus, I pray for my dad. And I ask you to forgive him for what he done. Because I forgive him for what he done. I forgive him for what he done. And I ask you to bless him, heal him. And that fear demon got into my soul because of my dad. And I want my dad forgiven and I want his spirits out of me. And I command by the authority of God's word, by the authority of the word of God, I command this fear spirit to come out of my stomach right now. Amen. You get out of my body right this second, you rotten spirit. Spirit, I command you to come out now in the name of the Lord. Get out of my body. Get out of my body right now. Come on, sweetheart, fight. Come on, get angry. I want my dad's fear demons out of me. Right now. Come out of me. Get out. Get out of there. Right now. Good girl. Keep going. Come on, keep going. Don't stop. Do not stop. Come on. Come out now. Love you. Satan, come out. How you doing, partner? <laughs> yeah. Come out of my body. I release my dad from my soul right now. Come on out. Come out. There they come. They're starting to come out right now. Good. Come out. Come out of me. Right now. Out, I said. YouTubers. Thanks for watching tonight. Sorry I went a little long. I apologize for that. I'll be back next Friday. Starting a new year. And you have to start a new year too. Go to the website. HardcoreChristianity.com Hit the teaching button. Read the article. How Satan controls the mind. Read the other article. Satan's counterattack. You will be attacked within 48 hours of this service. You must be ready for that attack. Send me an email, Mike at HardcoreChristianity.com and get the miracle list of self-deliverance and I'll send it right to you. See you next time.